The story starts that all of humanity was petrified. Then we'll see a few hours before. Taiju told his best friend Senku that he will confess his feelings to his crush Yuzuriha. Senku found it silly that he had been in love for five years and had no courage to confess his love to a Yuzuhira. He then showed Taiju a love potion which will help him, but Taiju refused. Taiju walked out and Senku told the others that his love potion was just gasoline. After that, Yuzuhira was called under a tree and she waited for Taiju. Then Taiju showed up and he was nervous about admitting his feelings. Then Taiju started to confess his love and Yuzuhira blushed. Before Taiju could confess his declaration of love, a green light appeared. The whole earth was enveloped in the green light and all people became petrified. In the last moment, Taiju tried to protect his crush with all his power. After that, all people were petrified and the world plunged into chaos. The people could not move, but they were all still alive. Meanwhile, they could not see anything and everything was dark. Taiju tried to keep his consciousness and he hoped that Yuzuhira is still alive. He didn't want to die because he hadn't gotten an answer from Yuzuhira yet. All men were petrified. Only the animals of the world were alive. Then several centuries passed, and the earth changed. The cities and civilization sank under tsunamis and world catastrophes. Taiju was still conscious and he didn't know how much time had passed. Several millennia passed and modern civilization disappeared from the face of the earth. One day, a liquid dripped onto Taiju's rock and he woke up. Taiju was able to break out of the rock and he was shocked. However, he discovered that humanity was petrified and everyone were turned into stone statues. Taiju was sad and prayed for the petrified people. After that he spotted a river and he followed the direction of the river. Suddenly, Taiju remembered that in his past, two girls had found a petrified bird. He thought the bird was afflicted with a disease. As a result, Taiju took the bird to a vet to revive him. Suddenly, his crush Yuzuriha appeared. However, Yuzuhira also showed a petrified bird. She had the same stupid idea like Taiju. Taiju started laughing and they became good friends. Back in the present, Taiju found his school's old tree. He was happy to have found Yuzuhira and thanked the tree because Yuzuhira's statue was not destroyed. Taiju also thanked Yuzuhira because just thinking about her kept him sane and alive the whole time. Then Taiju was able to confess his love for Yuzuhira and he cried because she couldn't answer him. After thousands of years, Taiju has successfully confessed his love. Suddenly, Taiju swore that he will revive her in the Stone Age. Also, he spotted a message for him and he immediately followed the river. Later, he met his best friend Senku, who was already waiting for his awakening. Taiju tried to hug him, but Senku didn't want to hug a naked guy and stopped him. Then Senku said that 3,700 years have passed and Taiju couldn't believe he knew the exact date. Senku replied that he was constantly counting the seconds that had passed since the petrification. So Senku said he almost passed out while counting, but he managed to persevere. Taiju was impressed by his best friend Senku, and he was led to a shelter. When Senku showed Taiju his built home, he was shocked. Senku built the basics of survival from scratch on his own. However, Senku said he knew his feelings for Yuzuhira is stronger than anything else. In the days that followed, Senku tried to restore civilization with Taiju. Senku intended to recreate the world from scratch and save all humans. Then several days passed and Senku was exhausted by Taiju's collected resources. Senku immediately sorted out the poisonous foods and told him what is non-toxic. After that, they grilled Taiju's collected mushrooms and ate them. Taiju thanked him for the delicious meal because Senku produced salt to season it. Following this, he immediately went on looking for more food. Later he found grapes and he tasted the grapes, which were sour. Suddenly he saw the statue of the strongest primate high schooler named Tsukasa. Subsequently, Taiju discovered a basket in a cave and Taiju thought that another person had survived. Then Senku appeared and said he was the person who put the basket there. Senku said their ultimate goal is to free more humans from petrification. Then Senku explained that he tried to dissolve the petrification with nitric acid. Taiju didn't know what nitric acid was. However, Senku poured nitric acid on the bird, and his test failed. Senku was depressed, but he didn't give up and wanted to do more experiments to find a solution with his knowledge about science. Suddenly Taiju asked a stupid question, and Senku was happy. Senku explained to him that he wants to make a new mixture. So Taiju said he didn't understand most of it, but he showed him grapes to make alcohol. Followed Taiju showed his physical farming skills, and they were able to quickly produce their own wine. 
Three weeks later, they successfully made wine, and Taiju said that they aren't old enough to drink booze. Senku said that 3,700 years have passed, and now they are allowed to drink wine. After that, Senku planned to distill the alcohol, and he built a crazy vase. Senku believed in science, but his try failed. As a result, Senku tried more attempts to create distilled alcohol every day. Then winter came and they still had no success, but they didn't give up. Then spring came and Senku tested his miraculous fluidity again. Suddenly, Senku managed to create a mixture that dissolves the petrification. He then tested the mixture on a bird again, and they managed to find a solution through science. A bird got out of the petrification, and Taiju was happy to see their success. The bird flew in the sky, and Senku was glad, because they were getting a little closer to civilization. Following this, Taiju asked his friend who he planned to free from the petrification first. Senku immediately replied that Taiju is allowed to choose the first person that they will revive. Arrived at the statue of Yuzuhira, Taiju asked if the water could surely save Yuzuhira. After that, the time finally came when Taiju was able to save Yuzuhira. Suddenly he realized that she is naked during her awakening. Taiju hurt Senku's eyes and he was annoyed with his stupid friend. Taiju insisted on carrying her back to the base first and putting clothes on her. Suddenly, Senku heard animal noises deep in the forest. Then a lion appeared, and they were stunned. Senku said the lions most likely escaped from a zoo. They then jumped off a cliff thinking they had escaped the lions. So Senku and Taiju tried to escape from the lion, but more lions appeared. Taiju ran away, and he chose to sacrifice himself to protect his friend. He wanted his friend Senku to survive with Yuzuhira. Senku said that he shouldn't say such nonsense, and they will both find a solution. However, he stopped Taiju, and Senku knew that Taiju is a good person who always protects others without taking care of himself. Senku and Taiju kept running, and Taiju came up with a plan. Senku decided to revive Tsukasa, and he apologized to Yuzuhira for his decision. Then he poured the miracle water on the statue of Tsukasa. The lions surrounded them, but Tsukasa was revived in time and saw the lions. Senku immediately reported the situation to him, and Tsukasa was ready for the fight. Tsukasa then attacked the lions with stones and he hit them with his fists. Tsukasa was able to knock the lion leader unconscious with just one punch. Then the other lions were intimidated because Tsukasa was stronger than Mike Tyson. Suddenly, Tsukasa said that they never have to be afraid of wild animals again. Suddenly, Senku said that Tsukasa is a double-edged sword because maybe through greed, he could become a tyrant. Taiju was afraid and he imagined Yuzuhira being seduced by Tsukasa. Followed, Tsukasa asked for a tool to cut the lion's meat. Senku told him that lion meat doesn't taste good and got a sour taste. However, Tsukasa replied that he will eat the lion's meat to pay his respects for taking a life. Taiju was happy that Tsukasa is a kind person, so Senku gave him a knife and he agreed to him eating that precious meat despite the disgusting taste. Later, Taiju promised that they would produce more miracle water and she would be revived next. Meanwhile, Tsukasa was surprised by Senku and they all got to know each other better. Subsequently, Tsukasa learned that they have no meat, and he immediately went hunting in the forest. Tsukasa found wild boars, and he defeated them all with ease. In addition, Tsukasa also caught a bird while flying in the sky. Then he went hunting fish in the sea with just a spear, and caught with his monster power many fish. Taiju was impressed by Tsukasa with his Stone Age skills. Tsukasa then said that as a team member, he promises to always provide enough meat so they can eat well. Suddenly, Tsukasa smashed a rock to save a statue of a young woman. Taiju was glad that Tsukasa is a kind person and thought he is a saint. Following this, they ate the grilled fish, and Senku asked them a question. Taiju tried to find the solution and his answer was incorrect. Senku was shocked at his stupidity, and Tsukasa tried his luck. Then Senku resolved the answer and said they need calcium carbonate for their next goal. As a result, Taiju was asked to collect many shells for crafting. Taiju collected a large amount of shells and crushed it into white powder. Senku intended to use the ground calcium carbonate for many works, so Senku produced a kind of cement and he also created soap in the Stone Age world. Senku became Dr. Stone and he gained the respect of Tsukasa. Tsukasa praised Senku, and Senku became suspicious at his words. Then Tsukasa replied that he had no ill intentions. Suddenly Taiju appeared and he interrupted their conversation. He asked about other uses for the shell. In the night, Taiju was sleeping and Tsukasa noticed that Senku is outside of the hut. Meanwhile, Senku built a crossbow to provide security. The next morning, Tsukasa said that the stone world is great, 
because sea and land have no owner. After that, he told a story that once a poor boy tried to make a necklace out of seashells for his little sister, suddenly a man with fishing rights beat up the boy and called him a thief. Then Tsukasa destroyed a human statue. Senku said he had just killed a human. Followed Tsukasa asked if he wanted to save all the people including the adults with the corrupted souls. Then Tsukasa said that adults will destroy the world again, and he got the plan to create a world ruled without greed. Then Tsukasa tried to destroy another statue. Senku stopped him and said he will save everyone in the world. Also he planned to bring back civilization. Following this, Senku and Tsukasa became enemies and each pursuing different goals. Senku knew that Tsukasa is crazy and they have to be careful. That Tsukasa doesn't get to the miracle water. Suddenly, Taiju appeared and he was happy to have collected enough miracle water to revive Yuzuhira. Senku had no choice, and he chose to show Tsukasa the effects of the miracle water. However, Taiju was happy to save his crush, but Senku said they didn't have enough miracle water. Taiju wanted to go collecting more, but he was stopped by Tsukasa. Senku already suspected that Tsukasa would immediately try to get information about the source of the miracle water. Thus, in Tsukasa's absence, Senku planned to complete the mixture to create the miracle water. Meanwhile, Tsukasa found out that the miracle water is nitric acid. Then we see Senku again, and he explained to Taiju that Tsukasa's ideals are wrong, so Taiju trusted his best friend's words. Later he learned that Tsukasa is a good person, but also a killer at the same time. After that, Taiju wasn't ready to pour the miracle water over Yuzuhira, so Senku poured the water over his crush. Then the rock didn't break off from her body. Senku explained to him that the reaction takes time because the molecules are connected. Taiju didn't understand anything, but he waited until Yuzuhira's rock shell shattered. As a result, Taiju remembered the time before he could finish his confession of love. He waited several thousands of years and was finally able to confess his feelings to Yuzuhira again. After all this time, Yuzuhira was alive again, and she was caught by Taiju. Taiju calls her name, and he apologizes to her. Then Yuzuhira replied that she was still asleep, and thanked him for saving her. Following this, Senku interrupted their reunion and he said they had to choose between two options. So Senku said, Tsukasa was on his way back and they would face him as an enemy. Taiju and Yuzuhira decided to help Senku fight against Tsukasa. Suddenly, Tsukasa appeared and he was determined to impose his ideals on the world. Then Taiju saw that Tsukasa had killed a human. He decided to stop Tsukasa, but Senku knew Taiju didn't stand a chance. Senku shot Tsukasa with an arrow but he easily deflected it. Then he also attacked Taiju, who was able to block his strong kick. Tsukasa noted that Taiju isn't willing to use violence at all. Taiju made a statement that he would avoid violence and offered Tsukasa to vent his anger on him. Yuzuhira and Senku were shocked by Taiju his stupid words. Meanwhile, Tsukasa was confused and overwhelmed by Taiju's stupid logic. Then Tsukasa asked what he would do if he killed Yuzuhira. Suddenly Taiju's head was bleeding and he passed out. Tsukasa knew that Senku and his friends are not his enemies, but they had different opinions and he said goodbye. Then Senku woke up Taiju and he knew how tough his best friend is. Taiju got up immediately and he said he was fit again. After waking up, he immediately wanted to stop Tsukasa from murder more humans. Then Senku said that they can only stop Tsukasa with the power of science. This is how the war between science and the Stone Age started against each other. Senku actually planned to build a weapon against Tsukasa. After that, Senku wanted to go gathering materials. So they set off, and on their way, cherry blossoms fell from the trees. Senku said that these are a new species of cherry trees that are no longer from their old world. Following this, they were on top of a mountain and Senku pulled a homemade tool out of his pocket. He determined the distance of their destination to the meter. Suddenly Yuzuhira spotted something in the distance. So they all followed Yuzuhira through the forest. Then they found a Buddha statue that they remembered from their old lives. Yuzuhira then recalled her childhood when she went to visit the Buddha statue with her family. Yuzuhira cried tears of joy, and Taiju thought he did something wrong. The reason Yuzuhira cried was that she just woke up recently, and the memories of the old world made her emotional. Following this, Senku and Taiju cheered her up. Taiju said that they found Buddha, and he will show them the way. Meanwhile, Senku realized that the statue is made of bronze, which is very useful for his plan. So he planned to destroy the statue to take the valuable materials with him. In the following days, they gathered many useful materials and ate stews together. At night, Taiju wanted to protect them, but Senku told him to rest. The next morning Senku was on a raft with Yuzuhira and Taiju was their human engine. 
Suddenly he noticed that Yuzuhira's foot is still petrified. So Taiju decided to use the miracle water to break the petrification. After that, they went further, and he said that they will soon reach their goal. Meanwhile, Tsukasa found the tracks of Senku's group. He immediately realized it was just a trap. Then Tsukasa suspected that Senku's plan is to build a weapon with science to defeat him. In the evening, they arrived at their destination, and Senku said that they can start to create a strong weapon with his knowledge about science. Senku wanted to build a gun. He said that they will now advance through time and use gunpowder to create new high-tech weapons. Then we see Senku again. He mined the volcano's rock and said they can start making a weapon against Tsukasa. In the followed night, Taiju wanted to talk about his confession 3,700 years ago, because back then, he couldn't confess his love for her in time. Yuzuhira wanted to know what he wanted to say back then. Taiju replied that since he was petrified, he has something important to confess to her. Unfortunately, they must first bring civilization back. Following this, Taiju said that together they will bring back civilization, and then he will confess his true feelings to her. On the next morning, Senku had mined enough ingredients for gunpowder, and he wanted to start to create a weapon that can withstand Tsukasa. So Yuzuhira then added sulfur to the bag. Second, Senku added the collected charcoal. Finally, Senku had taken nitric acid from the miracle cave. Then Senku mixed his materials in a hive and he added dextrose to it. When Senku finished shuffling, Taiju went to help him, but Yuzuhira stopped him. Senku said the stone will not cause an explosion. Senku explained why, but he made a mistake. As a result, the gunpowder caught fire, and they narrowly escaped the blast. Despite the failure, Senku was happy because they didn't lose any body parts while experimenting. Senku could make a dangerous weapon, and he was planning to make a deal with Tsukasa. The reason about his decision to make a deal is that Senku was sure Tsukasa is not a bad person because he didn't got the intent to kill them. Senku was confident that they could find a peaceful solution, but he was aware that if the deal failed, he would have to wipe out Tsukasa. After that, they put out the fire, and Yuzuhira saw smoke rising in the forest. Senku was shocked by the smoke signals, and he was sure it wasn't Tsukasa. He suspected someone was responding to their smoke signals. Senku came to the conclusion that other people lived in the stone world. Senku didn't want to put out their fire so they could attract the attention of the strangers. Unfortunately, they would also show Tsukasa their location, and they didn't know what to do next. Meanwhile, Tsukasa was on his way to find Senku. He suspected that Senku was smart enough to create gunpowder in the stone world. Suddenly, Tsukasa spotted the smoke signals from Senku's group on the mountain. As Yuzuhira gathered firewood, Tsukasa appeared behind her. He took Yuzuhira as his hostage, and Senku was aware that Tsukasa had become scared. He admitted that he can't stand against the weapons of the old world. After all the actions of Senku, Tsukasa was willed to kill anyone who didn't conform to his ideals. Tsukasa threatened Senku that he would kill Yuzuhira if he didn't stop making weapons from the old world. Senku lied to him and said that he doesn't care about Yuzuhira's life. Tsukasa knew he was a good person and he would never betray his friends. Tsukasa said that he is a smart person, but he would never sacrifice other people. After that, Tsukasa was sure he had won. Suddenly Yuzuhira said that she is ready to die. She wanted to sacrifice her life so that Senku could save humanity. Senku was touched by Yuzuhira's words, and he began to reveal the secret of the miracle water to Tsukasa. Meanwhile, Taiju collected firewood and he detected more smoke signals from the unknown people. Taiju immediately wanted to go back and report his friends about the great news. Then we see an unknown girl answering the smoke signals of Senku. Following this, Tsukasa let Yuzuhira alive and offered Senku to give up his plan, because otherwise he would die by Tsukasa's hand. So Tsukasa didn't want to kill Senku if he promised to quit science. Suddenly, Senku remembered his childhood at school. Senku said to the teacher that he will travel to space. At that time, he was still young, and he studied every day in order to get a lot of knowledge one day. Followed, his father sold his car because he wanted that Senku had enough equipment to research more about the world. After that, Senku started his scientific research. The older Senku got, the crazier his projects got. One day, bullies tried to destroy Senku's built machine, but Taiju tried to protect Senku. Senku was angry and built a weapon with science. He attacked the bullies on the followed day and they received their punishment. A few days later, Senku befriended with Taiju and Taiju helped him with his crazy experiments. At some point, Senku tried to build a small rocket that exploded immediately. Senku did not give up and he continued to research science. Then we see Senku in the lab and Taiju wanted to give him a present. Yuzuhira made three dolls for his rocket project. He then started another rocket test and his rocket flew into the sky. Senku's rocket exploded when he arrived at space. 
then he told his friends that his rocket attempt was a success. When Senku finished thinking about his past, Tsukasa said he didn't want to kill him, so he asked him again if he was willing to give up science. Senku declined his offer because he couldn't give up his passion. Tsukasa replied that he will end his life quickly and painlessly with one clean attack. Meanwhile, Taiju had a strange feeling and immediately ran to the volcano. Before Senku was killed, Tsukasa said that if they had met earlier, they would have definitely become good friends. Senku agreed. Tsukasa then attacked Senku, and he broke Senku's neck with his sword. After the final blow, Tsukasa realized that if they had met in childhood, they would have become good friends. He wishes he had met Senku in the old world before they went to the stone world. Below, we see Senku who is no longer alive, and Taiju didn't manage to save his best friend in time. Taiju and Yuzuhira cried for their beloved friend Senku. Taiju couldn't believe he died, and he didn't want to accept his death. Then Tsukasa said that they should bury their friend properly farewell. Taiju was furious, and Tsukasa sensed his lust for murder immediately. He knew that Taiju in rage could fight him. He hoped Taiju would keep calm, so he wouldn't have to kill him. When Taiju lifted a huge rock, Tsukasa was ready for a battle against Taiju. Taiju was angry and sad at the same time, but Yuzuhira managed to calm him down. She said that Senku sacrificed his life to protect her. Then Taiju threw the rock in the air to distract Tsukasa. Tsukasa was confused and tried to figure out their plan. Meanwhile, Yuzuhira tried to get the gunpowder. She believed in Senku's dream and she threw the gunpowder at Tsukasa. Then Tsukasa destroyed the pot full of black powder. Taiju and Yuzuhira have promised to fight together against Tsukasa with the help of science. Following this, Taiju was ready to defeat Tsukasa with whatever means they had. When the giant rock landed, the rock created sparks that immediately exploded. Tsukasa was hit by the blast and he couldn't see through the smoke. We then see Tsukasa and he was unharmed by the blast. He suspected that Taiju's plan was to escape from him. Then Taiju ran away with his dead friend, hoping to save his best friend Senku. Tsukasa was sure that Senku could not be revived in this world. Meanwhile, Taiju tried to revive him with a heart massage. Senku showed no reaction and he planned to do the mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. In that moment, Yuzuhira said it's her fault that Senku sacrificed himself to save her life. Following this, Taiju remembered a question from school. At that time, Senku said that he will always try to save everyone with science. Taiju was sure that Senku would never sacrifice himself without a plan. Suddenly, Yuzuhira remembered that Senku drew attention to his neck before he died. Then Taiju realized why he was always touching his neck. As a result, they found that Senku's neck was still petrified. They immediately understood Senku's plan to revive himself. They then used the remaining miracle water and poured it over Senku's neck. After the petrification was gone, Senku's friends hoped he would be revived. Taiju yelled at him saying that he needs to wake up to achieve his dreams. He knew that Senku was their last hope to rebuild civilization. Then we see the earth from space, and a single person counted all the seconds since petrification. Senku was petrified, but he tried to stay conscious. When Senku still couldn't see after 3,700 years, he hoped to be able to see something again. Suddenly the petrification was dissolved from his body. Senku was glad to be free of the rock, and was finally able to move again. Then Senku immediately started researching the petrification. Suddenly, monkeys appeared, who were scared on Senku's body because he saw a human for the first time. Senku was also surprised because he had discovered a new species of monkey. After that, Senku looked around and set his plan to rebuild civilization. Senku knew the exact time that had passed so far, and he carved the exact date on a tree. However, Senku was already looking forward to his goal of saving the whole world with the help of science. Then Senku tried to make a fire and the monkeys thought that Senku is stupid. In the evening, Senku realized that he doesn't have enough strength or skill like his friends to make a fire. He didn't give up, and knew he had to create fire with his knowledge of science. Subsequently, Senku smashed many stones to find a solution to his problem. He tried to find the right type of stone to achieve his goal. Senku failed trying to make tools, but he didn't give up. He knew that, like in his old life, he had to experiment a lot and find a way to solve his problem. He was then able to build stone tools that helped him solve his problems. Then he ties tree roots together into a rope. In the evening, Senku tried to create a fire again with his manufactured cord. However, Senku generated heat into the night, and he combined it with oxygen. As a result, Senku successfully created fire in the stone world. In the weeks that followed, he cut down trees for a shelter. Also, Senku tried to hunt meat, but he didn't have enough stamina. Senku was aware that he had no special physical powers, 
so he came up with a new plan to hunt animals. Senku was able to solve all his problems with science, and he caught a deer. In the months that followed, he ate the meat he killed. Additionally, he built new inventions every day to advance science. After several months, Senku managed to create a shelter with all the necessary infrastructure. Following this, Senku looked down on the monkeys, and he was already looking forward to saving the world one day. A few weeks later, Senku collected mushroom, and he finished the construction work. Suddenly, he fell over from exhaustion, and he wished for a person who would do the physical work. On the next morning, he dug up a stone statue because he planned to revive his best friend first. He became sentimental when he saw his best friend's face and looked forward to his revival after 3,700 years. He then tried to figure out how to revive his friend and came up with the multiple causes of the petrifications. Number one was that aliens purified them with a super alien petrification beam. Number two was that the military created a crazy weapon, which got out of control. The last hypothesis was that a new coronavirus caused the petrification of the world. After that, Senku tried to figure out the rules of petrification, using a bird as his first test subject. He pondered the solution to why he came out of the petrification and suspected it had something to do with a natural spring. Suddenly he noticed something and recalled the moment he was revived. Senku got a great idea and remembered that the fragments closest to his head were on the ground in a pile. Following this he found a cave and he smelled in the cave nitric acid. Senku used the hair of his neck, which was still petrified and he held it under the dripping mixture. Senku waited for a result and his experiment was a big success. Following this, he poured a bottle of the mixture over the statue of his best friend. He hoped that Taiju is still alive, but his first try failed. So he began with many experiments and realized the mixture wasn't working on humans. In the followed days, he thought about the situation and found the missed puzzle to his final success. He understood E equals sign MC square and was sure Albert Einstein is the solution for his problem. Then Senku started to grind and he was sure to find the solution. He built a laboratory and made many experiment in his little hut. After many weeks, he was able to create a solution and tried to awake his best friend. Finally, Senku found the formula for his solution and he waited for his friend to wake up. Back in the present, Taiju believed like Senku a few months before that his best friend will revived. So he hoped for a miracle and he knew Senku is one of the person who didn't give up. As a result, the storm clouds passed and it stopped to rain. Suddenly, Taiju looked to the sky and heard Senku's voice. Then they were glad to see him alive. Senku trusted that his friends would notice the petrification on his neck. Taiju was glad that he was alive and he almost crushed his entire body. However, Senku thanked them for reviving him and Yuzuhira cried tears of joy. After that, she thought the pattern of a sheet looked like a rocket and she said it will look good on Senku. Senku then said his self-sacrificing human experiment was a success, but he was surprised about the restorative effects of undoing petrification. Taiju said, maybe this petrification is the stone of life that replaces doctors for them. Senku realized from Taiju's words that he is right, and the phenomenon really becomes like a doctor stone, who heal all injuries. They then covered their tracks and Yuzuhira wondered if they could revive the broken statues. Senku replied he tried it before, but it didn't work. Suddenly, he had a great idea and knew he could only entrust the mission to Yuzuhira. She accepted his mission, and Taiju also wanted to know the secret between the two of them. So Yuzuhira told him they should go to Sitsukasa, but Taiju shocked about her words, and he was very confused about her decision. Senku explained him that Tsukasa thinks he is in the afterlife. In addition, he told them to infiltrate Tsukasa's empire as spies, and he gave Yuzuhira the details about the mission. He said Tsukasa intends to use the miracle water to amass an army of young people to make a new world, but Senku got the plan to make an army with science to fight against him. As a result, Senku planned to find allies for a scientific revolutionary army, and he sent his friends to infiltrate Tsukasa. Yuzuhira was surprised that they both are so casual about his plan. Taiju replied that Senku is always logical and he realized they won't be seeing each other for a long time. So Taiju ran back and he knew his voice won't reach him. Taiju showed a sign that symbolized his friendship. Following this, Senku said goodbye, and he showed his best friend the flag of science. In the meantime, Tsukasa noticed that someone was following him. Suddenly a cute girl with blonde hair appeared, and she brought him flowers. He wondered if she was a person revived by Taiju. Suddenly she attacked Tsukasa and he dodged her attack. Tsukasa was attacked by the blonde girl and he understood she isn't a revived person because her martial arts skills are insane. 
Then Kohaku said she saw all his evil deeds that he had done on the mountain. She thought he was an evil sorcerer and tried to kill Tsukasa with her Stone Age knife. He dodged her attack, and he understood that she didn't know what an explosion is. However, Tsukasa found out that she belongs to a new generation who didn't know about science. He didn't see primitive humans as a threat and had no reason to fight Kohaku. His goal was to return to the cave and claim the miracle water before they do. So Tsukasa said goodbye and just pushed her back. Then we see Senku. He heard the loud noise and immediately ran in the direction. Kohaku was surprised to see Senku, but he said she should stop talking and he tried to save her. Following this, Senku said he got two options, but one of them is very dangerous. She replied her organs and bones are fine. Senku was glad she wasn't hurt and he used his knowledge of science to save her safely. Kohaku was surprised about his construction and he explained that he will use science to save her. At the end of the day, Senku successfully managed to save her, and Kohaku was impressed by the power of science. Following this, Kohaku said she got a liking on him, and Senku misunderstood her words. In the evening Senku noticed that Kohaku slept with her swords. She replied, she liked the way he live, but she don't trust him yet. Senku said he wouldn't dare attack a lioness and told her to relax. So Kohaku learned about Senku's rude behavior, but she knew he is a good person. As a result, she offered him to help him fighting against Tsukasa. He told Kohaku about his plan, and Kohaku decided to team up with Senku. In the followed morning, Kohaku told Senku, she needs the hot water to make a hot spring bath for healing purposes. Senku made fun of her again, and she replied, the hot water is for her big sister. Senku learned her sister was seriously ill, and he understood that she loves her big sister because she brought the heavy jar to her village every day. Suddenly, Kohaku slipped, but Senku saved her in time and told her to hand it over. Senku couldn't handle the heavy jar and built a car to transport it. So Kohaku was impressed by his invention. Suddenly, they crashed into a tree, and Kohaku managed to survive unharmed, while Senku lay injured on the ground. Then he saw the village of Kohaku, and he was surprised to see many people. Senku couldn't believe to see the villager, also, he thought the village is a settlement of revived people, and he realized there is no sign of a revival fluid. Suddenly, he was attacked, but Kohaku protected Senku. Jinro and Kinro didn't allow Senku to enter the village. They said the rules didn't allow outsiders to enter the village because they are all criminals. Suddenly, Kohaku asked them if they want to fight against her, but they knew Kohaku would beat them up. As a result, Senku tried to convince them without violence, and he showed them soap bubbles. Kinro and Jinro were fascinated, and Senku planned to use science to win them over to his side. Suddenly Jinro knew he needs to use his special technique and decided to let someone else handle the problem. He got the intention to find his friend Chrome. Chrome introduced himself and said he is a super smart sorcerer. Following this, Senku introduced himself and told them that he is a scientist. Senku was surprised about Chrome because he wasn't scared like his friends. Suddenly Chrome said no one will beat him in sorcery, and he accepted Chrome's challenge. After that, Chrome showed him a fire, and Jinro was the only one who thought they will start a dangerous sorcerer battle. Followed Chrome said he will show them his rainbow bridge, so Chrome threw something into the fire and he turned the fire yellow. Kohaku and the boys were impressed to see his fire turning into many different colors, but Senku knew it's just a flame test reaction. Chrome couldn't believe that Senku knew about his trick and he thought Senku could read his mind. As a result, his plan failed and he tried to justify himself to Kohaku. Chrome went to his laboratory, and he created with a ball electricity. He scared his friend with the electricity, and Jinro thought he attacked him with his sorcerer skills. Then Senku saw his ball of sulfur, and he was surprised that Chrome managed to create that ball of sulfur. He got a liking of Chrome, and he showed Chrome the true power of his ball. So Senku paralyzed Chrome with his own trick, and he fainted out. Kohaku asked him about the trick, and Senku gave them the ball of sulfur. Following this, Senku looked at his treehouse and was amazed because he collected all minerals and scientific materials by himself. Chrome replied he collected everything and called the reactions sorcery. In that moment, Senku smiled because he found a guy who got the potential to become a good scientist. However, Chrome challenged him to a last duel, but he had no chance of beating Senku on a math question. Following this, Senku got his shed of science and Chrome joined his team. He discovered all of Chrome's treasures and they became good friends. Later, Kohaku let the two boys play with the rocks, and Senku got the plan to convince the two brothers with science. Then Senku sticked his spear into the fire, and he successfully created a golden spear. Kinro said he can't buy him off with this nonsense. 
Following this they noticed that Kinro liked his new gift and Ginro was jealous. Later Senku discovered that Chrome collected plants. Chrome said he collected them because he tried to find a solution to cure Ruri's disease. This was the reason that Chrome decided to become a sorcerer. In the meantime, Ruri thanked her little sister for bringing her hot water for her illness. Ruri's servants learned that Kohaku slept a night in the forest. Followed Ruri asked them to leave for a second. They refused and said they couldn't let the priestess be on her own. Ruri convinced them to leave and she was worried about Kohaku and knew something happened yesterday. Suddenly Ruri collapsed and she told Kohaku not to put herself in danger for her. After that, we see Chrome who asked Senku if he could use science to cure Ruri's disease. Following this, Chrome learned about the modern civilization and all inventions of the old world. He told Chrome about the petrification and the disaster of the world 3,700 years ago. As a result, Chrome began to cry and couldn't believe that someone destroyed the modern civilization. Chrome was angry, but Senku cheered him up and said humanity isn't going down that easily. Then Chrome decided to build a nation of science with him, and he intended to defeat Ruri's sickness with the power of science. Senku smiled by hearing his words, and he planned to make antibiotic in the Stone Age world. In the followed day, Jinro told the villagers about Senku, and they didn't saw him as their enemy. Then the village chief learned about the foreigner, who was brought by Kohaku. He got angry because he disowned his daughter, and she still doesn't obey the rules. Suddenly Ruri's illness got worse, and she collapsed. In the meantime, Senku planned with his friends to save Ruri. But Senku had ulterior motives and wanted to make all the villagers his workers. Following this, Senku told them the kingdom of science will produce antibiotic, which saved hundred millions of humans. Kohaku and Chrome were motivated to help Senku, and they told him to start right away. Senku explained them, there are two routes to making antibiotics. Senku tried to explain the theory, but they didn't understand anything and let Senku do the planning. Then he said, he will able to produce antibiotics with 10 billion percent. As a result, Senku planned the steps to make their miracle medicine, and he showed his friends the plan. They were shocked to see his complicated plan, but believed that Senku would pull it off. Chrome got excited and asked Senku about his plan to create iron. After that, Senku taught Chrome more about the world, and he was exhausted to be a teacher. Chrome was glad to learn about gravity and the space. So Senku told them about the space, and he showed them the North Star. Suddenly he noticed that the positions of the stars had changed, and he realized the Earth's axis is shifting. He understood that the whole planet has tilted slightly over the past 3,700 years, and the North Star moved. Chrome thought he knew more than Senku for the first time and showed him a magic stone. But Senku destroyed his self-confidence and told him that his rock is a magnet. A few days passed, and they went to a river to find more magnet rocks. Kohaku found many of the black sand, and Senku looked forward to produce iron in the Stone Age world. Later, Senku learned that Kohaku was the only woman with gorilla abilities, and she was angry at being called a gorilla. Subsequently, Krom had the idea to ask the village for help, but Kohaku said nobody would help, because they are both suspicious sorcerers. Suddenly a watermelon appeared out of nowhere, and Kohaku knew the girl. Senku was surprised that her name is Suika, and she got the intention to help them. Krom saw the iron sand, and she said she couldn't never make herself useful. As a result, she asked Senku if she could help him by searching the iron sand. Senku was grateful about her help, and he counted on Suika to find more iron sand. She was surprised about Senku, who was the first person to not ask her about the watermelon on her head. Following this, Senku wondered that they knew about legends of his old life, so they told Senku that Ruri told them about the story about Momotaro. In addition, Kohaku said she heard all kinds of stories from her big sister. Senku was interested in Ruri, and he decided to cure her illness with all cost. Suddenly Chrome got jealous, and he found out that Chrome had a crush on her. After a few days they collected enough iron sand, and Senku told them the next step. Senku explained they will burn it with the highest temperature. So Kohaku asked him about his plan, and Senku showed his self-made Stone Age oven. Kohaku was motivated to see Senku's new tool. Then they started to generate air with Senku's tool. Senku told them that they only need to last 20 to 30 more hours so they can make iron. In the evening, Jinro saw the fire and had the idea to help Senku, but Kinro said they need to follow the rules. Jinro was jealous about his golden spear, and they started arguing. In the followed morning we see Senku realized he needs more manpower to make iron. Senku and Chrome got the idea to bait Jinro with science, and Kohaku said they should stop calling it bait, 
Then Suika said she will find out what they need to recruit the villagers. As a result, they trusted Great Detective Suika with the important mission to find out the villagers' desires. Later, Suika went to the village, and everyone knew about Senku living in the shed of Chrome. Suika gathered a lot of information about the villagers and she went back to report Senku. In the evening, Suika told them that the dazzling sister wished to find a handsome boyfriend. Senku knew it's impossible to create a handsome boyfriend with science. Then Chrome called Kohaku a gorilla, and he was punished by Kohaku, who doesn't like his words. After that, Suika reported to Senku that the boy Ganon was sick to eat fish every day. Senku had a great idea and said he could already see the scientific bait that would got them to his side. Meanwhile, Suika played with a dog, and Senku noticed about her toy. Suika told Senku the dogtail millet is Chalk's favorite toy. The next morning, Senku harvested foxtail millet and said they would make gourmet survival food from scratch. Kohaku passed to eat foxtail millet and didn't understood his plan. So Senku explained Kohaku that foxtail millet is 10 billion percent a grain. Followed they processed the grain and mixed it with water. So Senku told his friends that they successfully made wheat flour and they celebrated. Afterwards he started the final step and mixed the flour with eggs to cook it with fresh ingredients. Senku cooked a feast with high quality meat and his friends smelled his soup. As a result, Senku said they called his noodle soup ramen. Chrome tried the ramen as the first one and he was overwhelmed by the delicious taste. However, Kohaku and Suika taste the noodle soup too, and they couldn't believe that such a thing would exist in the world. Then Senku tasted his cooked ramen and he was disgusted. Later they went to the village, and Senku intended to bait all villagers with his ramen. All villagers smelled his dish, and Kohaku told Senku that he looks like a villain. Then we see a mysterious guy who smiled after he found Senku's location. Meanwhile, Senku cooked foxtail millet ramen to find enough manpower to make steel. All the villagers loved his noodle soup and Senku became popular because he showed them such an amazing dish. Following this, Chrome offered Jinro and Kinro to try Senku's ramen, but Kinru stopped his little brother from accepting the offer. After that, Kokuyo was reported that his daughter is feeding the villagers. Kokuyo refused to eat the food of Senku, and Ruri wondered what Kohaku is doing with the outsider. Suddenly, an unknown guy said he would prefer the noodle soup with a drink like cola. Kohaku asked if he knew the guy, and she told his friends about an enemy. They then surrounded the stranger and asked if he was an ally of Tsukasa. He played dumb and he replied that he had been alone since he was no longer petrified. Following this, Senku realized he was the famous Asagiri Gen. Senku told Kohaku that he is a magician who wrote trashy psychology books. Gen said he is a mentalist and asked them to lower their weapons. Kohaku noticed that he wasn't scared and all his words are lies to manipulate the peoples. Then Senku said, everyone who had ramen has work to do and he forced all his customers to help him with his project. As a result, they started to produce steel, and everyone were exhausted. Senku knew Tsukasa sent him to spy on him, and he asked him about his friends. Jen replied that both his friends were fine, and he admitted to being an ally of Tsukasa. Following this, Senku learned that he decided to tell him the truth, after he discovered his crazy oven. At night, Senku looked up at the sky, and Jen watched him. A few days later, Senku was finally able to create metal. Also, Jen told him that his job was to confirm that Senku is dead, but he changed his plan. The reason was, he saw Senku making steel and believed that he got a chance to defeat Tsukasa. However, Senku and his friends produced successfully steel and Jen said he's going to tell Tsukasa a lie. He said it doesn't matter who wins because he just wants to be on the winning side, so he just wait and see if the Kingdom of Scientists will win or the Tsukasa Empire. Suddenly, Kohaku appeared and she threatened him, but Senku stopped her. Senku said he will convince Jen to change the side after he showed him his new invention. So Jen learned that he planned to build a generator, and Jen was shocked about his words. Suddenly the weather started to change and storm clouds appeared. Senku was nervous and said they need to hurry. Suddenly Suika appeared and she brought him the collected magnetic sand. He then planned to combine his magnetic sand and steel to build a generator. Senku told Suika to find a lacquer in the village and he was sure he will make it work. Followed Senku scratched lines on a wooden board and poured the molten steel into them. In the meantime, a girl reported that Senku destroyed the bridge. A group of villagers rejoiced at the news because they now have a reason to kill Senku. Kohaku reported that trouble awaited them, and Senku knew his plan would fail if they had to fight. In that moment, Jen offered to help them, and he asked Suika to collect some flowers. After that, Jen brought them flowers, and they thought he made fun of them. Jen said, 
They tried to stop the lightning with their sorcery, but Magma didn't believe him, so he tricked them, and Kohaku was surprised about his magic tricks. Senku said he is just a scammer using his mental strength to turn lies into truth. As a result, Magma went home and Senku worked on his plan to create a generator. Senku climbed a mountain with his friends. After that, they set up the generator and Jinro wanted to help them, but Kinro stopped him. Then they realized they need a spear, and Kohaku discovered Kinro's golden spear. She stole his spear and managed to store the lightning in Senku's magnet in time. As a result, he successfully created a huge magnet and was able to build his generator next. So Senku was happy that his plan worked, and he was excited by seeing the magnet. Later, Kohaku apologized for destroying Kinro's spear, and his little brother teased him. Suddenly, Kohaku wondered why his magnets didn't work. Senku solved the problem. Followed Jen learned he planned to build a muscle power generator. A few days passed, and they were able to build more things for his project. Senku and his friends made good progress building a generator, but Senku's face swelled. Suddenly, Jen asked him about his face and learned that the lacquer gave him a rash. Finally, Senku built his dual wheeled hand crank generator. After that, Senku said they need to find two people, work in perfect sync. They asked Kinro and Jinro, but they refused to help them. Following this, Jen tried to convince Kinro, and he said they could use electricity to make a gold and silver spear. Jen convinced the siblings to help them, and they took the bait. In the night, Kinro and Jinro worked for the Kingdom of Science. Then Senku showed Jen a steam roasted bamboo string. Later, Jen realized that Senku planned to invent the Edison light bulb. Senku asked Chrome if he is afraid of the night. The reason for his question was that he knew he had brought an important Edison invention to the Stone Age. He said with science, they can defeat the night. Following this, Senku created light, and everyone were shocked to see Senku's invention. In that moment, Senku was one step closer to his goal of bringing civilization back. Then Senku remembered reading Thomas Edison's biography for the first time. From that day on, he asked himself many questions about electricity, and he started to teach himself everything about electricity. As a result, he was able to create many crazy inventions, and he managed to bring light into the darkness in the Stone Age. Senku realized that he had received a great human achievement in electricity. He was extremely happy with his success, and smiled because he was well on his way to building civilization again. Meanwhile, Jen was surprised that Senku had invented electricity in the Stone Age world. Later they explained Suika about Tsukasa, and Chrome said he is a bad guy. Suika couldn't believe that Jen is a bad guy, because he helped them to solve their problems. Senku said Jen isn't a bad guy, but they needs to win them on their side. Following this, Chrome asked Jen if he had heard them. Chrome said he should join Senku's team, because the kingdom of science is just way more fun. Jen replied all he just care about is whether or not something will benefit him. Afterwards, Jen recalled the moment he was revived and thought it was all just a prank. Suddenly, Tsukasa told him they are in the Stone Age, and Jen recognized the strongest primate high schooler. Tsukasa said he gathered all the statues, who ought to be revived first, including him. Jen was shocked to see Tsukasa's empire, and Jen learned about his plan. Following this, he showed Senku's built treehouse, and he asked Jen to use his mentalist abilities to find Senku, if he is still alive. Jen learned about Senku, and he understood that Tsukasa is a dangerous man. Back in the present, Jen looked at Senku's generator, and Magma showed up. Magma beat him up, and he planned to murder him. Then Jen was badly injured by Magma with a spear, and they immediately fled. A short time later, Senku and his friends showed up to see after Jen. They were worried, but Senku noticed that he guarded himself with bags of fake blood. After that, Kohaku said he blocked it with those bags, but he was severely injured. They didn't know who the culprit was, and Suika decided to find the culprit in the village. In the days that followed, Senku and his friends tried to nurse Jen back to health. One day later, Suika found the culprit and she told her friends that the culprit was Magma. He celebrated his bad deed and wished to kill Kohaku as well. He knew that Kohaku was way too strong and he planned to make Ruri and Kohaku his wife. However, Kohaku understood why they had stabbed Jen. The reason was they mistook him for Senku because of the rumors about a sorcerer. Following this, Senku asked Kohaku why Magma is looking for an opportunity to kill her. She explained that once every generation the village holds a large martial arts battle called the Grand Bout. She said that the winner will marry Ruri and be made the village elder. The problem is the priestess Ruri was seriously ill and the only marriage candidate was not a good fighter. Kohaku knew that Magma is not a good person and only wants the position of village elder. Also, after winning, he intended to let Ruri die. 
As a result, Kohaku didn't let Magma to win, because she couldn't allow a man like him to have her big sister Ruri. She joined the grand bout to stop him, and Jinro thought that Kohaku will marry her big sister. Afterwards, Senku learned that the next grand bout would be in a month, and they believed that Magma thought Jen could win the competition. Senku understood that if Magma became the eldest, it might be difficult to even get the medicine to Ruri. Following this, Kohaku asked Kinro and Jinro if they would be willing to marry Ruri. Jinro said she is pretty, and Kinro was shocked that he only looks at a girl's appearance. Then Kinro said that as a guardian, he doesn't ask questions and he knows that Senku has no bad intentions. Kohaku replied that her only goal was to save her big sister's life. As a result, the two boys decided to help Kohaku and were trained by Kohaku to fight Magma. Later, Kohaku noticed that Chrome was deep in thought and she knew that Chrome truly loves Ruri. She apologized for not training him and Chrome knew himself that he wouldn't stand a chance in the fight against Magma. At that moment, Chrome remembered his childhood. Ruri said her illness could not be cured, but Chrome promised to do everything to save her. So Chrome said he is totally cool with that and he looked forward to save Ruri with the power of science. Senku smiled and he was happy to found a new scientist on his side. Later Kohaku said she planned on participating the grand bout. Also, they were worried about Jen because his recovery will take a very long time. Senku knew that time was running out, otherwise Tsukasa would find out that he was still alive. During the night, Senku whispered something to Jen and he started to smile. In the followed morning, Chrome was shocked to see that Jen vanished. He was on the way back to Tsukasa and Kohaku feared he would betray them. He ran to the Tsukasa Empire as fast as he could, and one of his warriors stopped him with an arrow. He reported to Tsukasa that he found a primitive village and told him about the death of Senku. Then we see Senku, who stopped Kohaku to catch Jen. He explained her that if Jen really didn't have an interest in science, he never would have cooperated with them. So Senku knew he wouldn't betray the kingdom of science. The reason was that the day before, Jen asked him if he could make coke. Senku replied that he sure can make cola. As a result, Jen didn't snitched on him and reported that Senku is dead. So Kohaku was happy that they won the first battle and looked forward about their new team member in the kingdom of science. In the meantime, Jen couldn't believe that he risked his life for a bottle of cola. Then Senku planned to make a bottle of coke in time for his return. In the followed week, we see Kohaku training Jinro and Kinro for the upcoming competition. Meanwhile, Senku planned the next step to create a medicine for Ruri. He told Chrome that they will produce glass. Chrome didn't know what glass was, and he explained that you can mix chemicals very well with it. Also, Senku planned to make glasses for Suika, and Kohaku was surprised how cute Suika is. Unfortunately, she can't see properly without her melon. Following this, Suika said she had the fuzzy sickness in her eyes. As a result, she ended up looking weird when she tried really hard to see. Senku explained to them that after inventing glasses, they can correct Suika's poor eyesight. Senku told Suika that she was nearsighted and not a disease. This is how Suika learned about the glasses in the old world, which allowed many people to live normal lives. Suika wished to see the beautiful world with all her friends, and Senku wanted to fulfill her wish. Following this, Chrome showed Senku a place where he found quartz. Senku dug on the mountain, and he showed him the raw material to make glass. Then they start working together and they had a lot of fun digging up the quartz sand. In the evening, Senku started the next process and he heated the quartz sand in his furnace. The next morning, Senku was exhausted, but he wanted to continue working. Finally, he produced lens glass and everyone wondered what he was going to do with the new device. Chrome understood his plan and they began to grind and polish the lens glass. They worked every day and made good progress. A few days later, Senku was able to create lens glasses so that he could grant Suika her wish. Later, they set out to show Suika the beautiful world she had never seen. Senku asked her if she could see the flowers in front of her, and she tried to focus her eyes on them. Suddenly, Senku put the bowler hat with the lens glass on her, and she could see the beautiful sunflower in front of her. Suika cried tears of joy and was grateful about Senku's gift. Meanwhile, Kohaku mimicked Magma's attacks, and Kinro didn't manage to block them. She made Kinro aware that he always misjudged the distance and Jinro knew about his big brother's problem. The reason for this was that he also had poor eyesight, and Jinro was worried about his brother, but promised not to tell anyone about it. Then we see Senku, he was already planning his next project, and was yelled at by Chrome not to express his words like a villain. The following morning, Senku began making glass instruments. 
Suika helped them and collected many black rocks that foamed when heated. Senku explained her that they used the foam as insulation to make a glass-blowing furnace. Then Senku produced an iron straw to blow up the glass with air. Unfortunately, his attempt at making glass instruments was a failure, and Senku suspected that working with a craftsman would be more successful. So Chrome kidnapped an old man, and he asked Kasiki to help them, but he got angry and said he wasn't into bondage games. Then Suika showed up, she wanted to return the lacquer she had borrowed. Senku learned that Kaseki was the person who made the fantastic shield of Kohaku. In that moment, Kohaku remembered the happy time when she was given her father's shield. Knowing that Kaseki is a talented craftsman, Senku showed him his projects. Senku knew he could bait him with his glass. Then Senku explained his plan to make glass instruments. Chrome was able to pique his interest, and Kaseki couldn't stand their clumsiness. Senku's plan worked and Kaseki freed himself from the bonds. Also he transformed into Mutin Roshi, and they were surprised about his muscles. Following this, Kaseki showed them his craftsman skills, and he started the process of rounding the glass. Senku and Chrome were impressed, and Kaseki had a lot of fun making the glass instruments. The following morning, Senku acquired a science lab and was able to begin his experiments. Senku remembered when his father created a space for him for science and he looked forward to further achievements. Then Senku said that from now on, they will invent more awesome things and they will all have more fun than in Tsukasa land. After that, we see Mecha Senku, he explained Senku's science kingdom and it started with his base. Second, we see Senku's food truck that served ramen. As the third, Mecha Senku showed us that Senku also unlocked an industrial furnace to produce metal. Then, Mecha Senku introduced his fighters preparing to fight against magma. Jinro was lazy, and he was forced to generate power at Senku's generator. In addition, Senku has obtained Kaseki, who uses his muscles to make glass instruments. As a result, Senku was given a lab, and they were well-placed to save Ruri with antibiotics. Chrome knew their kingdom of science is starting to heat up, and Senku agreed with him. Then Senku told Chrome that the technology was even crazier before the world collapsed. In the meantime, Jinro was jealous about the sorcery team, because they looked like they had much fun. Suddenly, Jinro said that shining spears give them more motivation to become stronger. Kinro agreed, and they asked Senku to embellish their spears with gold and silver. Senku knew that a gold or silver spear would do him no good in combat, but he accepted their request. So Senku said he will make Jinro a silver spear, and Kinro was sad. Suddenly Senku told Jinro not to rejoice too soon because it would be dangerous to make him a silver spear. The following day, Chrome was surprised that Senku was using a strange-looking plant to make silver. Jinro was happy to get a silver spear, and he teased Kinro for not getting anything from Senku. As punishment, he was knocked unconscious by Kohaku for teasing his brother. Then Senku successfully created a silver spear for Jinro, and Senku wanted to use his spear for another purpose. He said his job will be the team's bodyguard, and they went off. Following this, Senku told his friends that Jinro's spear serves as a sensor. He said that if the deadly threat appears, his spear will turn black. In addition, Senku explained to them that they all have to run away immediately so that they don't die. Later they discovered a river where no fish were swimming. Senku said they goal is upstream from the river. Meanwhile Jinro was scared of dying, and Senku yelled at him for running back. Kohaku offered him to swap places, but he refused to give up his silver spear. Then they reached their destination, and Senku was totally exhausted from the mountain hike. Kohaku was surprised by the sight. The reason was, they found a whole emerald spring. At that moment, Jinro hallucinated an angel calling to him. Jinro ran towards the emerald spring, and Senku had a strange feeling. He wondered why Jinro's spear didn't react to the poisonous gas. Then they saw Jinro running into the poisonous emerald spring. Senku ordered Jinro to come back, but he was hypnotized. In the last moment, Kohaku saved Jinro, and a group of crows were lured into the spring's water. So they saw the enemy trying to kill them, and Kohaku tried to calm Jinro down. Senku explained to them that sulfuric acid is a miracle drug of science, but also very dangerous. Later Senku told them they can't make antibiotics without the sulfuric acid. Kohaku was willing to risk her life, but Senku stopped her. Senku told her about a story when a group went to do research around an air of sulfuric acid. Then Senku smiled and said he will solve the problem with gas masks. In the evening, Senku was ready for the fight against sulfuric acid and he knew an error would mean their death. Then Senku asked Chrome to stay in their base. He said there was no guarantee that the gas masks would work and he had to stay because no one else could save Ruri. So Senku said he will going to pass down all the science he know to him right now. Senku said that he doesn't plan to die, 
but he didn't want to risk losing the science. Chrome replied that he will come along because he won't let him down. The reason for this was that Chrome considers Senku an important friend, and he can't just let a friend die. Following this, he said that he doesn't want to be protected, and he showed his determination to Senku. Chrome said that they are both scientists who can save each other in times of need. Senku was touched by his words and Chrome was able to convince him. Chrome knew that Senku's friends also risked everything to advance science, so Chrome said he will follow him no matter how dangerous their adventure will be. Senku trusted him with his life and they formed a team. Then Kohaku remembered the day it was decided that she should be the next priestess. She had no intention of helping with a plan that made it okay for Ruri to die. As a result, she refused and tried to find a way to save her beloved sister. She thought that if she wasn't able to take on the role of the priestess, Ruri would have no reason to leave the world. After hearing Chrome's words, Kohaku was happy, and she wished Chrome could marry Ruri. She knew Chrome had always loved her sister and would risk his life for her at any time. Unfortunately, the marriage between them would not be possible and Kohaku asked if she should be his wife. Chrome understood that she wasn't serious about her proposal and said that he would never marry a gorilla. In the morning we see Senku, he started to do the final process for his gas masks. After some crafting later, Senku and Chrome received gas masks. Later, Senku and Chrome were on their way to the Emerald Spring. Jinro was ashamed because he was terribly scared. He declined to accompany them and said he will never return to that place. Following this, Senku said they couldn't force him and they went off without Jinro. Back in the present, Senku and Chrome arrived and his silver spear turned black. Chrome was aware that they could die instantly, but Senku just ran into the danger place without hesitation. Senku said freaking out helps him even less. Then Chrome realized that Senku was scared too, and he accompanied Senku without complaining. Meanwhile, Kaseki noticed that Jinro was in a bad mood, and he freaked out. Kaseki told him that he shouldn't be ashamed of being afraid. He said that all people have fears and there is nothing they can do about it. At that moment, Jinro realized that Kaseki was right. He realized that despite their fear, they faced the dangers. However, Jinro was cheered up, and Kaseki said he accidentally made another mask. Later we see Senku and Chrome mining rocks, and Chrome alerted Senku that his gas mask is melting. Senku was glad there were two of them and immediately repaired his mask. Suddenly Chrome tripped and Senku tried to save him, but Chrome knew he was going to die. Jinro appeared at the last moment and tried to save Chrome with his spear. He tried to pull Chrome out with all his strength and Senku told him to control his breath. Following Jinro tried to save Chrome, and Chrome believed his friends will make it. Jinro faced his fear and he used all his power and was able to defeat the evil monster. They managed to capture the sulfuric acid and their mission was a complete success. Senku and his friends celebrated their victory and they were ready for the final step. The following day we see Suika waiting for her friends to return. Suddenly Senku appeared and Kohaku couldn't wait to make the medicine for her big sister. She was then reminded of the long roadmap, but Senku assured her that they have all the resources needed to start producing antibiotics. Following this, Senku started to boil the sulfuric acid, and he added a little bit of salt. Suika wondered what the weird glass sculpture was for, and she learned that it was a water-dripping machine. As a result, Senku received hydrochloric acid, and he explained to them that the chemical is very dangerous. He then produced more dangerous chemicals, and he stated that chemicals could kill a person instantly. Kohaku learned that no one will drink the chemicals, and she was shocked when Senku produced ammonia. Later, Senku said that they only need alcohol to make the miracle medicine. Kaseki told them that they can win alcohol in tomorrow's tournament. They were happy to hear this, and Chrome expected the two brothers to win tomorrow's grand bout. Then we see Kokuyo and he was glad that the new village chief will be chosen tomorrow. Also he was reported that all preparations are proceeding well. Unfortunately, they had a problem because Kohaku signed up for the grand bout too, and Kokuyo learned of Senku's participation. The reason for this was that Ginro helped him register for the grand bout, and the girls were shocked about the news. Senku replied that he didn't plan on winning, and he will only try to increase their team's chance of victory. Kinro wanted to win fairly, and the two boys said they would help him win the grand bout. He was disgusted by their plan, and complained to Kohaku. She then replied that she only wanted to save Ruri, and Kinro was touched by her words. The following day, we see the villagers, and everyone was waiting for Senku. He walked on the bridge, and Kohaku was happy that he was allowed to enter the village after half a year. Senku knew it would be the first step to success and all the villagers stared at him. Kokuyo learned his name was Senku, and Ruri knew the name for some reason. She said she knew his name even though he had never met him. 
Then she ran towards Senku, and she spoke to him. She wanted to know his last name. Before he could answer, Ruri collapsed in front of him and he was ordered to stay away from Ruri. She was carried back to the hut, and Senku understood that they had a lot to talk about together. Meanwhile, Magma made fun of Ruri, and Chrome stopped Kohaku so she wouldn't do anything wrong. At that moment, Kohaku remembered that Chrome also helped train the two brothers every day because he wanted to protect Ruri from Magma. Following this, the contestants learned their matchup, and Senku planned for Kinro to win against Magma in the finals. Suika prayed to God and hoped that everything will go smoothly. A short time later, the matchups were chosen and they learned that Kinro will fight against Magma in the first round. Senku wasn't discouraged and he revealed to them that he had made a special drink using science. He then said that it would make them stronger and Ginro drank the drink alone because he was nervous. However, Senku said it wasn't bad and Suika went to collect more of the grass. Later they waited for the first battle to begin. Suddenly, Mantle appeared and reported that Suika was drowning near the river. Senku and Chrome knew he was lying, and they asked how he knew about the grass by the river. Then Kohaku said that she is aware that Mantle is lying, but she is still worried about Suika. Afterwards, Chrome tried to stop the fight, but Jasper replied that if she doesn't show up on time for the third match, she will be disqualified. Magma was happy, and he was sure that with Kohaku's absence, he will win the grand bout. Then Magma said if Kinro surrenders that he will appoint him as his right-hand man. Kinro refused because he wants to fulfill his duties to his friends. After the conversation, the fight between Kinro and Magma began. He attacked Magma with powerful attacks, and he was surprised by the strength he gained. Meanwhile, Mantle tried to sabotage Kinro, but Chrome warned him that Jasper will punish his team. Senku heard the conversation and decided to stop his sabotage attempt. We then see Suika, who was tied to a tree but she managed to free herself and she went back to the village. Meanwhile, Magma distanced himself, and Kinro had trouble judging the distance. Suika noticed that Kinro has the same eye problems as her. She ran to Senku and said that Kinro also suffers from the fuzzy sickness. Then Magma started attacking him, and he managed to seriously injure Kinro because he couldn't judge the distance. He couldn't move anymore, but he didn't allow himself to let his friends down. Suddenly Suika stood on the highest point of the island, and she planned to support Kinro. She rolled down the stairs and used the momentum to throw her helmet at Kinro. She told him to use the eyes of science and he jumped towards her melon helmet. Kinro transformed into Melon Ranger and the boys were shocked. Meanwhile, Kinro couldn't believe that through the power of science he could see all the movements clearly. Kinro gained observation hockey and dodged all of Magma's attacks with ease. Then Kinro started attacking and he punched him in his face. After his strong attack, he said that science helped him overcome his weakness. Suika was amazed by his Melon Ranger performance, and they celebrated Kinro's victory against Magma because they had defeated the most dangerous opponent. Then Magma said that he had broken the rules by wearing the Melon Mask. Magma wanted to accept his loss unless the referee declared the fight invalid. Kinro asked if his Melon Helmet was against the rules, but Jasper said it's not a rule break. Suddenly Magma appeared behind Kinro, and he hit him on the head with all his might. As a result, Kinro was knocked out and Magma won the fight because he let his guard down. Kinro apologized, and Senku was still confident of victory. Afterwards, Mantle provoked them and said that Kohaku will be disqualified because she wanted to go save Suika. Suika was worried, but she couldn't see well without the lenses. Everyone was aware that the situation was serious, and Kohaku found out that Suika was safe. Then the second fight began, and Chrome tried to buy time for Kohaku to return, but she was already on her way back to the village. Magma immediately ordered Mantle to give up the fight, and Chrome won the fight. Afterwards, the third battle began, and Senku was declared the winner because she failed to return in time. Suika couldn't forgive herself that Kohaku was disqualified, but she was happy because Suika was unhurt. Suika apologized, but Kohaku hugged her, and she wasn't angry at her. Afterwards, all the villagers thought that Magma will marry Ruri, and Ruri was disgusted by him. Suddenly, Senku said that Jinro must become a hero, and everyone doubted him. Jinro was sure to win because he drank Senku's special drink. Then Jinro got ready for battle, and he thought that the grass would give him a power-up. As a result, Jinro imagined he had been transformed into a superhero, but in reality he was staggering like a drunk. Senku was confident that Jinro can win. Then Jinro attacked and he got his opponent into trouble with super-fast attacks. Then his opponent tried to use the same attack, but he was immediately exhausted while Jinro was bursting with energy. Unfortunately, it didn't correspond to reality, and Jinro was seriously injured by his opponent's attack. 
Despite everything, he managed to defeat his opponent, and he won the fight. Later reality caught up with him, and he had stomach problems that made him unable to continue fighting. This left Senku and Chrome to win against Magma so they could save Ruri. Chrome was motivated to win against Magma, and they entrusted him to save Ruri, with whom he had been in love since childhood. Everyone hoped that Chrome would find a way to outsmart Magma, and the battle began. After the fight began, Chrome was immediately knocked to the ground and was tormented by Magma. Everyone wanted Chrome to give up, but he refused because he knew Ruri would die otherwise. Suddenly Jen showed up and noticed Chrome's dire situation. Magma made fun of him and said that he is happy to see Ruri's tears as she begs for his life. But Chrome couldn't accept his defeat and tried to do something with the melon helmet. Then he attacked Magma and he tried to use science to defeat Magma. Following this, they wondered what Chrome was doing and he planned to start a fire by using a lens. Senku immediately realized the plan and he explained that he was trying to make a fire. Kohaku and Suika learned that he uses science to try to win the fight. Meanwhile, Chrome believed that with the science he learned from Senku, he will save Ruri. Magma looked down at him and Senku said his plan won't work. Senku suddenly realized that Chrome had planned to get injured so that his tear could change the concave lens. Afterwards, Senku noticed that Jen appeared in the village watching the fight. He was looking forward to his cola and asked when the fire would start. Then Senku calculated using his MC equal sine square formulas, and he found out that Chrome needs one minute to start a fire. Jen wanted to use his mentalist skills to buy Chrome enough time, so he confused Magma and said that he used magic to survive his murder attempt. Magma was confused, and he said that he will put a curse on Magma. Senku supported Jen and he claimed that his heart would explode if he tried to complain. Afterwards, Magma was scared and Chrome also lied to him. His acting was horrible, but Jen managed to immobilize him for a minute. Meanwhile, Jen knew that Magma fell for his lie and they waited for the chance for Chrome to win. They knew that Magma had fallen for their trick and that he had no chance of winning. Unfortunately, he noticed that the liquid was shaking. He calmed down and he did his best to save Ruri. As a result, he managed to start a fire that burned Magma. Then Chrome said he won't kill him, and he hit Magma in his balls. So Chrome was declared as the winner of the Grand Bout. Everyone celebrated Chrome's victory because Team Science had won the Grand Bout. Ruri was happy, and everyone congratulated Chrome on winning the Grand Bout. After the fight against Magma, Jen said that he will wait for Senku outside the village. Meanwhile, Ruri was very happy that Chrome won. Jinro said he will give up because they know she is in love with Chrome. She loved Chrome but she replied that as a priestess, she only serves God and would marry any winner. This led to Jinro deciding to win to become her fiancé, and Jasper couldn't believe how stupid Jinro is. Then the second fight started, and Jinro attacked Senku with full force because he wanted to marry Ruri. Kinro and Kohaku were shocked and disgusted by him. He set himself to create a harem with his new power as village chief. No one wanted him as their village chief, and Senku tried to avoid his attacks. Suddenly, Chrome used his last strength, and he threw him the melon helmet. Senku took advantage of the opportunities, and he planned to defeat Jinro with science. So Senku defeated his opponent, and Kokuyo understood that Senku is really a genius. Senku was declared the winner, and Chrome was happy that they can save Ruri. Later, Senku planned to lose on purpose so that Chrome could marry Ruri. Unfortunately, he was unconscious, and they realized that the winner means Senku. As a result, Senku was crowned the winner of the grand bout, and he was chosen as Priestess Ruri's fiancé. Following this, Senku decided to marry Ruri in order to preserve the whole village. Kokuyo didn't want to accept him, but Senku annoyed him and said that he should show more respect to the new village chief. Afterwards, Senku's alcohol was brought to celebrate his wedding, but Ruri collapsed and she spit out blood. Senku planned to return to the Kingdom of Science. The villagers wanted to celebrate with him, but he said he was getting a divorce. He then ran back to the Kingdom of Science to make antibiotics. The villagers were shocked and Ruri became the first divorced priestess ever. Meanwhile, Kokuyo was angry, but Kinro told him that Senku is a good person. Later, we see Kaseki building a new invention. Jen was forced to help him with the work and he couldn't refuse. Afterwards, they went to the lab, and Senku woke up Chrome with the smell of ammonia. Chrome woke up and they immediately started making medicine for Ruri. Chrome noticed that they were out of charcoal. Senku explained that he had nothing to worry about, and he collected the burned coal. So he mixed vinegar and alcohol together, and Chrome learned that they have a lot of tasks ahead of them until tomorrow. Then Team Science started working to produce antibiotics, and they worked through the night. 
The following morning, Jen poured water into a glass, and he realized that Senku was making carbonated water. He remembered that Senku planned to make him cola and was excited. When he arrived at the lab, he found Senku and Chrome passed out on the floor. He explained that he added too many chemicals, and it caused an explosion. However, Senku planned to use carbonated water, and Jen hoped that his cola would be made. He was wrong, and Senku completed his plan to make medicine for Ruri. At that moment, everyone gathered together and they remembered the hard work and fun times together. As a result, he was able to successfully create antibiotics in the Stone Age world, and they all celebrated the successful project. Senku said that it's not time for Kohaku to cry yet, and she should wait until Ruri is rescued. Following Senku was on his way to the village, and Jen couldn't believe to see Senku's bottle of coke. He smiled, and he was happy to drink his beloved cola after a long time. In the meantime, Senku entered the village, and he showed Ruri the medicine he had made. Ruri trusted Senku, and she was willing to take Senku's medicine. She was then given antibiotics, and Senku examined Ruri's body. All the villagers wondered what he was doing and he tried to hear her breathing. That evening, Senku planned to do an experiment with a mouse and Jen was confused. He replied that he will do some researches and he suspected Ruri was infected with a bacterial infection. Afterwards, he said that Ruri may not be cured if she has pulmonary tuberculosis. Suddenly, Suika reported to them that Ruri was in pain and Kokuyo was worried about his daughter. When they arrived at the hut, Senku behaved strangely and Kokuyo wanted to kill Senku. The reason for his behavior was that he realized that Ruri can be cured, found out that Ruri's illness can be defeated with medicine and said that they won. Followed, he suggested that Ruri should take more antibiotics. Kohaku convinced her father that he should believe Senku and that he is not an enemy. Everyone showed that they trust Senku and Kokuyo tried to believe in him. A few days later, Senku was impressed that Ruri could live until 18 and he knew that Kohaku was the reason for this, because she brought her big sister hot spring water every day which protected Ruri. Everyone was happy that Ruri was healthy again after all this time, and she told her father a secret about Senku. Then, Ruri was happy that she could run again after a long time. In the afternoon, Senku was officially named Chief of Ishigami Village. He couldn't believe it, and Ruri said that she had known his last name for a long time. Following this, Senku thanked her for the information and said that everything now makes sense to him. Senku said that he probably came up in the priestess mythology, and Ruri confirmed his statement. Chrome and Kohaku were confused, but they remembered the Hundred Tales. At that moment, she remembered her mother telling her that there was a story. The previous priestess told her that one of the tales is a true story. She said the title was Ishigami Senku. The story of Senku started in a night when Senku asked himself questions about the moon. His father noticed early on that he was interested in science. Byakuya teased him a little bit and he gave his son some advice. In that night, Senku learned that his father failed the astronaut exam again, and after the conversation, he had a new goal. The following day, he decided to fly into space. Since then, he has been experimenting diligently to one day fly into space. A few months later, Byakuya was chosen as a candidate to go to space. In the meantime, Senku planned many experiments and stole a doll from the school. He experimented with his friend Taiju, and they learned a lot. The reason for this was that he wanted to help his father learn to swim. Unfortunately, his experiment failed, and his father felt pain from powerful electric shock waves. Byakuya understood Senku's message and he smiled underwater. As a result, Byakuya learned to swim, and in his interview he said that he only made it this far because Senku believed in him. The interviewers were convinced of him, and Byakuya wanted to become an astronaut at all costs because he wanted to give something back to his son. Five years later, the crew members boarded the spaceship. Suddenly. Byakuya stole the microphone and told him that he will bring him many science souvenirs. Then the launch into space began and the story of Senku Ishigami ended. After that, Senku told everyone that the founder of the village was his father. Following this, we learn about the story of Byakuya, who was in space. The rocket docked with the International Space Station. When Byakuya arrived at the space station, Jacob greeted him and introduced himself. Byakuya was grateful to meet them, and he introduced his friend Jamil. Suddenly Lily caused problems and she introduced herself as a famous celebrity. Jacob was scared of her, but Byakuya started to laugh at her performance. So her prank was ruined because Byakuya found her bad acting too funny. Lily apologized and said it was just a prank. Dahlia was happy that she was just joking and she said that she and her husband are doctors. They then got to know each other and Connie showed up. She was a huge fan of Lily. Connie asked if she could get an autograph from popular singer Lily. 
However, Byakuya teased Lily and suggested that they will play her songs every day. In the following days, Lily held a live concert in space. The whole world heard her voice, and people enjoyed her song. She was on every screen and had many fans who admired her. Everyone on Earth knew her, and many fans were always happy to hear her beautiful voice. Then she ended the live stream and she asked if the two boys wanted to call their families. Byakuya said that his son was probably researching things right now. Following this, we see Senku, who saw the petrified birds on the whole world. He researched it and found what was happening in the world hilarious. In that night, Lily couldn't sleep and she apologized for waking up Byakuyan. He teased her a bit and he shot his load. Then she said that she had liked music since she was a child. One day, her Walkman was destroyed and she started singing herself. Suddenly, she noticed that Byakuya had fallen asleep and he said sorry to her. Then Byakuya looked at the earth and he asked her if she could sing a song to Senku someday. A few days later, we see Byakuya and he was playing with miso soup in space. Later, he planned to let Jamil taste Japanese dishes and he was shocked to learn that he drank the same thing every day. He then gave Jamil his custom-made ramen. However, Jamil tried the ramen and he had a surprised expression on his face. He looked shocked because the earth glowed green. Then the others also saw the disaster and they couldn't believe what was happening on earth. At that moment, all the residents were petrified and Byakuya was worried about his son Senku. Unfortunately, they couldn't do anything in space and they couldn't reach a single person. They realized that something happened on Earth, so they tried to search for information about the Earth on the internet. Byakuya had the idea of watching a live camera. Suddenly, they saw that everyone on Earth had been petrified. All crew members were shocked by the disaster and didn't know what to do. At that moment, Byakuya suggested flying back to Earth. He said that they are humanity's last hope, and they will save all of humanity. Then we see the time right before Senku was petrified, and he dropped his monster energy drink at that moment. Meanwhile, Byakuya found out that the petrification beam was launching from South America. He planned to save his son and humanity at any cost. Followed, he put on his astronaut suit and planned to fly back to Earth immediately. But Jamil offered that he will fly down first because Byakuya has a son, who was waiting for him. He said that if he will die, that nobody will raise his son, and Jamil was able to convince him that the best option would be to send him, because he has no family waiting for him. Byakuya didn't want to risk Jamil's life for his selfish goals, but Jamil promised that he will arrive safely on Earth. Senku counted the time, and a group of astronauts managed to land safely on Earth. Unfortunately, Jamil reported that it ended up in the sea, and the hatch would sink as soon as it was opened. Then we see Senku again, and he didn't give up counting and he tried to be conscious so that one day he could save the world. After that, Byakuya decided to fly back to Earth, and he planned to save their friends. Many hours later, we see Jamil's group and they were almost out of air in the hatch. Lily decided to sing, and she said they don't have to worry anymore. The reason for this was that Byakuya paddled a boat and he was on his way to save them. He apologized that it took him more than 10 hours to arrive, and Jamil was happy to see his friend. So they were rescued and they rode to an island where Dahlia and Jacob were waiting for them. Later, they saw a person on the island and they immediately ran to check if anyone had survived the petrification beam. They realized that the person was petrified and they had to accept that no one had survived. Then, they started looking for firewood and Jamil noticed that Connie was crying. A short time later, Byakuya found a survival kit and they were confident that they would survive on the island. Suddenly Connie said that she had lived on a farm and that she was able to find food. They relied on Connie and Jamil decided to accompany Connie into the forest. Since that day, three years passed and Dahlia looked at the sea with her children's. Then we see Connie and Jamil's wedding. They celebrated their wedding and everyone congratulated the two on their marriage. Jamil said that they have more important things to do than celebrate his wedding. Suddenly, Lily offered to sing a song to celebrate her friend's wedding. They enjoyed their time together and listened to Lily's song. She remembered the time when she learned about music and realized her passion for singing. She then started crying and ran away. Lily told Byakuya that she felt sad at the thought that the music would one day be forgotten. So Byakuya cheered her up, and he said that his son Senku will definitely save humanity. Also, he said that he is not blood-related with Senku, but he was sure that Senku is 10 billion times smarter than himself. Then he promised Lily that Senku will save humanity, and they must do their best to support Senku in the future. Back in the present, they learned that they were all descended from the six surviving people. Kohaku thought that they are all related to Senku, and he said that he is not blood-related to Byakuya. Then they were invited to the festival, and they celebrated together that Senku became the new village chief. 
Everyone had a great time, and Kohaku was happy that their village had become so lively since Senku's appearance. Suddenly Kinro appeared, and he forced Jinro to guard the bridge to the village with him. Then we see Senku and he was walking with Ruri and she was telling him about the end of his father's story. Following this we see that Connie suffered from a serious illness. Dahlia planned to sail with her husband to the main island to find medicine. Unfortunately, they never returned, and Connie died from her illness. Jamil was saddened by the death, and he could not believe that his beloved wife had died. A few months passed, and Jamil was also affected by the same illness. At the last moment before his death, he said that he had a lot of fun with them. He also thanked Byakuya and said that he never imagined having children and a wife back then. He was happy to have met Byakuya in his life and he thanked him for the great time they had together. In the evening, Jamil passed away and Byakuya looked at the stars that were shining brightly. A few weeks later, he thought of imparting wisdom to their descendants and he called it the Hundred Tales. Byakuya believed that one day a story about minerals will lead a person to collect stones. This is how Senku learned about Byakuya's plan and Senku smiled that Chrome became that person. Afterwards, they arrived at the grave of all ancestors, and Senku was amazed by his father's work. Before Byakuya died, he had delivered a message in the final story of the 100 Tales. His words were to Senku that he was fine and that he had fun in life despite the disaster. Additionally, he told Senku that he believes in him and he knows that Senku will save humanity. Byakuya's last words were very emotional, and Senku could feel Byakuya's words in his heart. Before he went back to the feast, he wanted to take a look around his father's grave. He smiled, and Senku was touched by his beloved father. As a result, Senku looked forward, and he was motivated to save humanity. Later, Jen said he had another message, and Senku asked what was happening in the Tsukasa Empire. He told Senku that Tsukasa and his army were coming, and Senku was ready to fight against him with the power of science. However, Jen reported to them that Tsukasa planned to attack the village because he was trying to avoid Senku's victory if he were still alive. Then we see Jinro, who was jealous because he wasn't allowed to celebrate with the other villagers. Kinro realized that an enemy had appeared and asked Jinro to call for help. Jinro was shocked by the enemies and Kinro ordered his little brother to destroy the bridge if he was killed. Kinro then walked backwards to keep his distance and his opponent was impressed by Kinro's instincts. Then, the enemies began to run towards Kinro and they were sure to defeat him. Kinro immediately defeated the warriors of Tsukasa's army with his strong attack. Yoga looked down on the weaklings and they apologized to him for their failure. Then he ran towards Kinro and he immediately noticed that Kinro had bad eyesight. Meanwhile, Jen explained that they were in danger because Hyoga was revived and he is also very strong. Suddenly Jinro appeared and he warned the villagers about enemies. Kinro fought against Hyoga, but he barely managed to avoid Hyoga's attack. Afterwards, Jen saw Kinro fighting Hyoga and he fatally injured him with his spear. They were worried about him but he ordered his brother Jinro to cut the bridge. Koyuko ordered Jinro to destroy the bridge because they needs to protect all the villagers. So Jinro ran to the bridge and he hesitated to cut the bridge because he would lose his brother. Kinro accepted his death and Jinro began to cry. Suddenly he stopped and he started crying because he knew his big brother was going to die. Senku decided to save Kinro with the help of science and he put the last gunpowder he had into a jar. Jen understood Senku's plan, and he asked Magma to throw a stone at the enemy. Unfortunately, Magma refused to help him, but Jen convinced him with his mentalist skills. Following this, Senku began to light the gunpowder and Magma threw the stone. Jen supported them, and he tried to convince the Tsukasa army to retreat. They retreated because they thought Senku had a gun, and Hyoga was amazed by him. He knew that Tsukasa would be happy, and Senku said that he had already made thousands of rifles. As a result, they managed to save Kinro and Senku gave him medicine to make him healthy. The next morning, Kinro feared that the enemies would return, and Senku replied that he can rest because the Tsukasa army will not show up until a storm. Then we see the warriors of the Tsukasa army, and Senku was sure that Jen will convince them to wait for a storm. But Hyoga decided against the option of waiting for a storm. The reason for this was because he knew how dangerous Senku was. Unfortunately, he could not convince the peasants of the Tsukasa army to return and he did not stop their plan to fight against Senku. After that, Senku made Kinro a pair of glasses, and he liked them. Suika also received a new helmet and she was happy about it. Then we see Kohaku and she was still worried about Hyoga, but Senku was planning something. Kaseki liked his plan and started implementing his project with his team. A few days later, Kohaku feared that a storm was coming soon, 
The Tsukasa army were happy that their chance came to attack Senku, and they went to the village. Then we see Senku, and he was aware that the enemies will attack soon. Suddenly the enemies appeared and he lured them into his trap. However, his friends appeared, and they attacked the enemies with katana swords. Senku knew that with the Blade of Science they could defeat the enemies with ease, and Hyoga was impressed by the power of the science's kingdom. As a result, Team Senku overwhelmed the opponents, and they destroyed the opponents' weapons. Senku remembered the days when he heated the metal, and Konseki forged the swords. While forging the swords, Senku explained that they can create powerful weapons in a short time. Kaseki had a lot of fun forging the blades, and he understood how dangerous the katanas would be. This is how Senku managed to produce the strongest blades in the stone world. Back in the present, the Tsukasa army was frightened and Hyoga looked down on the weaklings. He was sure that his Kudayari is stronger, and he attacked Magma. Suddenly, almost all of Team Senku's warriors were attacked, and Kohaku realized that Hyoga is a different league. Meanwhile, Jen told Hyoga about the strongest fighter in Senku's army, and Kinro understood that he secretly told them that the three people mentioned should be careful. But Magma didn't listen to Kohaku's orders, and he charged towards the opponents. Kohaku had no choice, and she planned an attack with Kinro. Unfortunately, Hyoga managed to react to Kohaku's attack, and she couldn't see through his spear attack. Just before Kohaku was stabbed, the tip of his spear disintegrated and everyone was confused. He remembered Jen touching his spear a few days earlier. So Jen was accused of being a traitor and he was aware from the start that he would be caught. Meanwhile, Suika remembered when she received a mission to deliver a knife to Jen a few days earlier. Senku relies on Detective Suika to be able to find the traces Jen left behind. Following this, Suika found flowers and she was able to find Jen's location. Jen received the knife and he couldn't believe it when he saw the gift. Back in the present, he took his chance and made fun of Hyoga for falling for her trick. Senku praised Jen and they defeated the enemy with the Blade of Science. Following this, we see the day when Tsukasa was reviving a guy who he was looking for all this time. Hiyoga was revived with the Miracle Water, and he was greeted after his awakening by Tsukasa. Then he told him that 3,700 years passed, and Hiyoga learned about his plan to create a new world. Later the other guys made fun of him for being skinny, and they bullied him. Suddenly Tsukasa asked if Hiyoga would like to spar with the other guys. He agreed and said that he will defeat ten of them with his favorite weapon. After the fight, Tsukasa apologized that the weaklings weren't enough to warm him up. Hyoga replied that the only real fighter was standing before him and they shook hands. Then Tsukasa led his new member into his Tsukasa empire, which consisted of many strong and young people. He told Hyoga that he intended to create a peaceful world. Following this, Manami welcomed Hyoga to the Tsukasa empire, and she agreed that she is happier in the new world. Also she said that she is a big fan of the strongest primate, Tsukasa. Everyone admired Tsukasa and Jen remembered that he was always a charismatic person. He was aware that it would be difficult to convince the enemies to switch sides. Followed Tsukasa asked his new member if he shared his opinion that the weapons of science should no longer exist. He was of the same opinion and said that the desires of the old world must remain extinguished forever. Then Tsukasa said that Senku is trying to bring civilization back and he will kill him with his own hands if he is still alive. Back in the present, they managed to surround Hyoga and the guerrillas of the Tsukasa army decided to retreat. Meanwhile, Hyoga was impressed by Senku and his friends, but he said that the fight was just a distraction. Senku looked at the village and he realized that Ishigami village was burning. The villagers of Ishigami village tried to put out the fire, but the fire spread far too quickly. The reason for this was that Homura sneaked into the village and tried to kill them. Also she destroyed a bridge and she caused a huge trouble for the villagers of Ishigami village. This is how Team Senku discovered Homura and they learned that Homura is Hyoga's right hand. He told that she is very capable and she dodged Kokuyo's attack. Then Kohaku attacked Homura, but she managed to dodge her attack with crazy moves. Hyoga and Homura fled and the village didn't stop burning. Meanwhile, Jen tried to evacuate the residents, and Senku ordered the villagers to flee immediately. Ruri was desperate, and Senku's team tried to save everyone. As a result, they managed to evacuate all the villagers, and the Tsukasa army was watching them. One of the men was about to cause trouble, and Hyoga planned his next attack. Senku's team had fallen into a trap, and Homura caused a fire. All the villagers tried to put out the fire, and Jinro despaired because their hard work was being destroyed. Suika intended to protect the kingdom of science, and she lured the gorillas away from Senku's kingdom. Hyoga was grateful that they were stupid because it increased his chances of winning. Then we see Suika, and she managed to successfully lure the enemies away from Kingdom of Science. 
Senku's team later learned that she wanted to lead the enemies to the hot springs where they got the dangerous water. Kohaku and Senku were worried about Suika because the weather might change. Then we see Suika and the wind carried the poisonous gas towards her, causing Homura to feel death. At the last moment, Kohaku appeared, and she managed to save Suika from the poisonous gas. The gorillas noticed the danger too and they climbed on a tree. Senku looked down on them and he made fun of them that he won against them with science. Senku laughed at them and said that they have no choice and have to wait in the tree for a long time until they can go down again. Then Hyoga decided to sacrifice some of Tsukasa's soldiers to see that Senku wasn't lying. He learned that Senku's masks were real and he understood that Senku is a dangerous enemy. Kokuyo celebrated the victory against the Tsukasa army and he praised Suika for helping them. Meanwhile, Hyoga came up with a plan to defeat the Kingdom of Science. A few days later, Jen asked Senku about his plan. He said that unfortunately, he cannot produce gunpowder. He explained to them that Tsukasa has the cave to obtain nitric acid, and he can't make gunpowder without it. Additionally, Tsukasa has an army ready to attack them. Senku explained that his plan is to attack the Tsukasa Empire first, and Kohaku liked his plan. So Senku told them that with the power of science he will build a great machine, which will help them to win the war. Following this, Senku told them that he planned to produce cellular phones. Jen thought he was crazy and wondered how he would do this. Later, all the villagers found out about the usage, and they were all confused. Senku told them that communication will help them win, so he said that they can win the war against Tsukasa without fighting. Jinro wondered who the double agent was, and Senku looked at the flag of science. He said that he already had spies in the Tsukasa Empire and knew that Taiju would love the idea. After that, they started drawing their next roadmap to produce a smartphone in the Stone World. Meanwhile, Hyoga returned to the Tsukasa Empire and he reported Tsukasa that Senku is alive. He was shocked by the news and he was angry. Then Jen used his mentalist skills and he put himself in Tsukasa's position. They couldn't believe that Jen had even copied Tsukasa's voice. Meanwhile, Tsukasa decided to revive more fighters, and Hyoga told him that attacking in winter would be most effective. Chrome then asked if Senku's friends were in danger, but he assured him that they would serve as hostages for Tsukasa if necessary. Hyoga then said that he told Homura to keep an eye on Senku. He was aware that communication is the most powerful weapon in the stone world. In the following days, all the villagers helped them with Senku's project. Kohaku was happy that Senku became village chief, and that they could progress faster. Suddenly Chrome and Kaseki wanted to know more about his invention and they were excited. Senku explained to them that they use vibrations in their voice to transmit sounds to another device. This is how they use radio waves that come from another device to hear the words being said. They didn't understand anything, and Senku said that their next project will be making a cotton candy machine. Jen was confused, and he didn't understand why he needed a cotton candy machine. Following this, Senku poured molten iron into a container, and Kaseki began shaping his components. Then Senku said that he uses his invention to make cotton candy by spinning sugar over a fire. Chrome realized he wanted to make gold threads, and Jen understood his plan. So Chrome went to get gold, but Senku first wanted to do a test by making cotton candy. Senku went to the destroyed village and learned that the sugar fell into pieces at the edges of the barrels. However, he took advantage of the teamwork of the two brothers, and he created sugar thread. The girls were excited and got to try Senku's cotton candy. They loved Senku's fluffy snack and they praised the sweet taste of his delicious food. Afterwards, Kokuyo tried the cotton candy and the other villagers were grateful to taste it too. Senku was happy that he could see the villagers smiling and Jen gave Senku an idea. So he asked about Homura and Jinro misunderstood something. Senku told him that they were being watched by Homura and they were shocked by the news. Senku said that she was watching them from a faraway place and Jinro was scared. However, Jen told them she won't cause any problems because she won't disobey Hyoga's orders. In the evening, Senku visited Homura, and he brought her cotton candy that he made for her. He left a letter, and he wrote that the cotton candy wasn't poisoned. The reason for his gift was that he was trying to use his cotton candy to get Homura to switch sides. Suddenly, Ruri remembered the evening with Senku. She said that Senku was just pretending to be a bad guy, but he was really just trying to be nice. Meanwhile, Homura licked Senku's cotton candy and she remembered her childhood. The following morning we see Jinro, and he was serving cotton candy. Jen thought he was Gordon Ramsay, and he said his cotton candy wasn't fluffy enough. Suddenly Jinro complained and he wondered what cotton candy had to do with the war against Tsukasa. 
Then Senku said that he should relax and that they won't tease him, but will soon make threads with the valuable gold. So they continued making cotton candy and they found the problem, which was causing the clumps. Senku thought of a plan to make the rotation smoother, and they all suggested an idea to Senku. Suddenly Senku had an idea and asked Kaseki for help. Kaseki carved him into a gear and he wanted to use Kohaku's shield. Kokuyo was shocked because it was a good luck charm for his victory that he gave to his beloved daughter. Then he hoped that Kohaku would stop Senku, but she didn't care about her shield gifted by her father. In the afternoon they received gear that improved the production of candy cotton. Suddenly Chrome had an idea and he asked Kaseki for help. Kaseki was excited about his plan and he immediately wanted to implement Chrome's idea. In the meantime, Senku had successfully made Gon coil out of gold and he wanted to process it further. He told about the further plan and they were shocked by his plan. So the villagers worked together on Senku's new invention and they repeated the process. Senku's team worked every day without a break and they came closer to his goal of building a phone. A few days later, Chrome returned and he worked through three days to build his invention. Later, Senku saw the water wheel built by Kasiki and Chrome. He was surprised by the plan that Chrome came up with himself. Chrome was disappointed because Senku was already aware of his invention. However, he praised Chrome and Kaseki for being a great help to him in the war. Senku immediately planned to use the water wheel and he incorporated it into a new invention. As a result, Senku received a hydroelectric power plant. He showed the miracle that they created together and they were all amazed by the power station. Following this, his friends asked what he had built and Senku explained that they would use the new generator to generate electricity. He told them that his power station is not yet complete. So he said that they would build a box to collect the escaping electricity. Later, Senku started his plan to make a battery to collect the electricity. Kasiki and Chrome helped him out and he used the sulfuric acid and named it Ryu. Senku built a battery in just a few hours. Jinro learned about the danger of electricity and Kohaku enjoyed the show. At that moment he realized that with Kinro, he would never have to exert himself to generate energy again. Afterwards, Kohaku's workout plan began to prepare the boys for the fight against Tsukasa. Senku was working on the next invention, but he made a mistake. Suddenly Kaseki and Chrome woke up, and they couldn't stop working because they were having way too much fun. So they started helping Senku, and they managed to build a new machine. As a result, they received an air-blowing machine at level 3. Later, Kokuyo learned about an option to preserve food for the winter. He was impressed and excited to learn new things. Then Senku started his attempt to build a light bulb, but his attempt failed many times. Meanwhile, Kaseki said that despite all the hard work, he is having a lot of fun and enjoying his time building things with him. He said that Senku is a great person, and all the villagers enjoyed to support Senku on his goal. Together, the villagers harvested a lot of vegetables, and they came closer and closer to their goal of building a civilization. Then we see the two cute twins, who were stomping grapes to make wine. They all continued to work diligently and managed to expand the kingdom of science. A few months passed and the weather began to change. Senku and his friends were ready for the winter to fight against Tsukasa. When winter came, Chrome remembered that the last time the light bulb went out immediately. Following this he explained the process to build a light bulb in an environmentally friendly way. As a result, they managed to build a light bulb that didn't go out immediately. At night, all the villagers were gathered by Kohaku and Senku said that the time would come soon. Suddenly it started snowing and Kaseki replied that they are ready to go. At the right moment, Senku turned on the lights and he created a beautiful Christmas tree that marked the beginning of the Christmas season. Senku said that today is Christmas. In addition, Santa Claus from another isekai anime appeared, who was reincarnated into the Stone Age world. In the mornings that followed, Chrome realized that they could enter the caves without getting lost. Chrome was motivated to find more rare stones, and he wanted to help Senku with his project to build a cell phone. Senku understood that Chrome wanted to explore the cave and he asked him to return before the new year. Afterwards, Senku planned to invent the next level of the light bulb, and he told Kaseki about his plan. Senku explained to them that they will serve as the heart of a cell phone and they realized that they made a mistake. As a result, the light bulb broke and Senku came up with a plan to solve the problem. He developed an idea and worked with his team into the night. A few days later, Chrome returned with a piece of Cooper and Senku confiscated a collected stone. He then started to build a solution to his problem, but his attempt failed. The reason for this was that a bamboo filament burned out and they tried further attempts. In the evening, Senku was depressed, but Kohaku tried to cheer him up. 
Unfortunately, Senku didn't have a plan to solve the problem. All the villagers wanted to help Senku, and they hoped that they would find a solution in Chrome's stone collection. Meanwhile, Jinro learned that he was holding raccoon poop, and Senku became even more depressed. Suika wanted to cheer Senku up and she tried to find a rare rock. Meanwhile, Senku couldn't sleep because his project to build a cell phone had failed. Suddenly Jen appeared in front of him and said that it was New Year. All the villagers gathered to watch the sunrise together. Then Jen said that he doesn't even know how old he is anymore, but Senku knew his exact age. Shortly afterwards they arrived at the highest point of the mountain. Senku realized that the stone of Suika was glowing and he knew that it was a gift from Santa Claus. Suika found a gemstone and Senku explained to her that it is ski light. In addition, he said that the stone reacts to the rising of sunlight. He knew it was the solution to their problem, and he said they could build a cell phone using the most heat-resistant rock in the universe. In the afternoon, Senku began building a team so they could find more of the valuable gemstone. Senku looked at his friend's strengths. As a result, Magma was chosen and he planned to go on a dungeon expedition. Senku's friends were worried about his decision, but all he thought about was building his cell phone. Chrome understood that they needed more of the rare gemstones and Magma planned to kill the both scientists. Before they went into the cave, he whispered something in Magma's ear and they said goodbye. Suddenly Jen started smiling because Senku had left the village. A few hours later they arrived at the cave where Chrome always looked for his rocks. Chrome didn't trust Magma and he wanted to know the reason behind Senku's decision. Then Senku replied that they have no other choice and they urgently need the power of Magma to obtain the rare rock. Suddenly, Chrome said that Magma might be planning to kill them, but Senku wanted to take the risk. Afterwards, Senku warned his team, and he explained about the danger of friable rocks. Magma asked Senku if they would die if they fell into the holes. Following this, Senku made a wrong step, but Magma sacrificed his life to save him. Magma fell into the hole, but Senku reached his hand. So Chrome thought that Magma was trying to push them into the hole, and Magma played the bad guy to get Senku to let go of his hand. Unfortunately, Senku didn't give up on saving him, and the ground started to crumble. As a result, the two fell into the hole, and Chrome failed to save them. A short time later, Senku tried to find a solution to get out of the hole, and Magma was annoyed with him. Senku replied that it's better than doing nothing, and Chrome poured water on his head. The reason for this was that Chrome planned to pour water down the hole so they could swim out. Senku laughed, and he didn't think the idea was bad. He calculated the depth of the hole and came up with a complicated scientific formula. Chrome replied that they can count on him, and Magma threw him a water pump. Then Senku talked to Magma, and he explained to him that all people are important to a civilization. In addition, he said that for this reason they need smart people as well as strong people with a lot of physical strength. Suddenly Senku began to show him the true power of science. Magma remembered the amazing and interesting things created by science. In the meantime, Chrome was having trouble filling the hole with enough water. The water flowed slowly into the hole, and Senku no longer had the strength to endure the cold. However, Magma offered to let Senku stand on his shoulder. He said that he would accept him as his boss until they defeated Tsukasa. He then threw Senku out of the hole with all his strength, and Chrome was shocked that Magma accepted him. Afterwards, they both got out of the hole and talked about the worst-case scenario. Senku said that the worst-case scenario would be that they would have to warm themselves up with their body heat like vegans. They were all happy not to be vegan, and we learned that the boys were all into girls. After a nap, Senku made a flashlight, and they continued their dungeon exploration. Later Senku smiled, and he said that they have come to the right place. He discovered a Skarn deposit and explained that they had found treasure. Senku explained to him how the different colors of the rock came about. He also said that without magma, they would never have discovered the rare place. Following this, Magma took out a pickaxe and he said that he could kill them with ease. Senku wasn't afraid, and he knew that Magma was just playing the villain. However, he explained to Chrome that Magma had been trying to protect them the whole time, and he never intended to kill them. At that moment, Chrome understood that he was wrong and apologized to Magma. Then they started to play Minecraft, and they acquired the most heat-resistant rock in the universe. After getting the rare rock, Chrome said that they found something more important than a treasure in the dungeon and that would be the true value of friendship. Senku and Magma were disgusted by his words, and they began to dig up the treasure. Before they returned, Magma remembered Jen's words about bringing Senku back after three days. Magma then forced the two of them to leave the cave with him immediately. In the evening, they almost arrived at the village and Magma blindfolded Senku. 
Jen and Kohaku were waiting for him because they had a surprise for him. Kohaku said that they all worked with Jen, and he thought that his friends planned to betray him. Jen replied that he has no idea what he's talking about, and he said that Kohaku can take the blindfold off. Following this, he realized that his friends had built him an observatory with a telescope. At that moment he remembered the gift from his father. Suddenly Kohaku said that Senku's special day has come. He learned that all the villagers and his friends were planning to celebrate his birthday with him. Then we find out that Jen had suggested building a surprise for Senku's birthday three days ago. All the villagers heard Jen's great plan and they offered to help them. As a result, everyone worked to build Senku a laboratory. Meanwhile, Jinro teased him and he told Senku that he should be happy to have such great friends. Senku was grateful about his birthday gift, but he wondered how they knew his birthday date. Then he remembered when he had told Jen his birth date a few days ago. Jen replied that he discovered his tree where he had carved the date of his revival. So Senku found out about Jen's story, and he learned that Jen had decided to support him before they even met. He knew that Senku wasn't an emotional person, and he was right. A short time later, Suika was allowed to test the telescope, and she was amazed to see animals from far away. In the meantime, Senku and his friends noticed that the rare stones from the cave shone like diamonds in the sky. Kokuyo thought that they were using gemstones to make weapons, and they were shocked at how stupid he was. Then Jen explained to him that they are using it to build cell phones, and Senku said that they have body parts to build it now. Senku planned to use the collected tungsten in the vacuum tubes, and he knew that they had found a truly valuable treasure. Magma learned that Senku needed the inside of the stone, and he began destroying the stones. Kokuyo was surprised to see Magma volunteering to help, and he asked if something happened in the cave. The reason for this was that Senku and Magma became friends in the cave. In the following morning, Senku explained that they would begin heating the tungsten toothpaste. Then Chrome learned that they can't heat tungsten toothpaste in glass. Senku explained to them that they will split up and one person will have to make a pinpoint heating machine. Suddenly Chrome realized that he was being entrusted with the important task. Chrome was happy, and he said that with science he will succeed in his task. Kaseki was jealous of their great friendship and he told them about his past. They learned that he loved building new things, so he said that he would also like to have a maker buddy. Suddenly Chrome said that he is wrong, and he and Senku are his maker buddies. Kaseki thought he was too old, and Chrome replied that his age didn't matter. At that moment he remembered the wonderful time he had spent with the two boys. He realized that they were both right, and he was grateful for their words. As a result, he transformed into Mutin Roshi, and he started working on the new project. Meanwhile, Jen was forced to assist Senku, and he didn't understand a single word of his orders. Soon after, Chrome created a giant lens, and they all trusted Chrome's idea. Kaseki wondered if the heat was enough, and they started the test. Following this, they conducted a test, but they noticed that the lens did nothing. Chrome tried a new idea, and he used all his knowledge of science to solve the problem. Then his plan started working, and he was punished for calling Kohaku a gorilla. The following morning, Senku finished making tungsten toothpaste, and he was shocked after seeing Chrome's build machine. Chrome said that he used all his knowledge, and Senku was proud of his student. Then Senku said that with the power of science, they will change the world. Senku and his friends started working. As a result, they received the most heat-resistant metal in the universe, which is also called tungsten filament. Following this, Senku said that they have all the parts, and they can start building a cell phone. Kaseki was motivated, and Senku explained the plan and the necessary glass instruments to his friends. Kaseki looked at his idea, and he was shocked by Senku's Hickman pump. Senku said that they have already built a level 1 Hickman pump, and now they need to build a more complicated pump. Unfortunately, Kaseki was unsure if he could build a Hickman pump, and Jen used his mentalist skills to motivate him. Kaseki replied that he didn't want to be cheered up by the mentalist skills, but he wanted the support of his maker buddy, and Senku entrusted him with the project. Suika also wanted to help Senku, and he entrusted the children with the wires. So Suika and the other children began to help Senku with his project. Later, Senku started making plastic with the chemistry team, and Jen wanted to know how he planned to create it. Suddenly Kaseki appeared, and he forced Jen to help him with his work. Senku started making plastic, and Chrome didn't understand the work process. However, Senku explained him the details, and he was disgusted by the smell of a chemical. Shortly after, he noticed that Suika and the other villagers were shaking, and he decided to help them with his next project. Senku planned to get a large amount of coal with his friends, and Jinro planned to run away. Kinro stopped him and he was forced to go collecting coal with them. So Senku's friends went to the mountains and he and the others made a furnace. 
Senku built a warm hut for the kids so that they would not freeze in the cold winter. Besides, he could use the coal ash for his project. Later Kokuyo showed up, and he was happy that Senku became the village chief, because he created many miracles since the day he arrived. In the afternoon, Senku asked Jen to do him a favor. He started rolling zinc like an onigiri, and he realized that building a zinc carbon battery isn't that difficult to build. So he started building several of them, and he was shocked that Senku needed 800 of the batteries. Meanwhile, Kohaku brought him a wine barrel, and he explained that they will use the pink grains stuck on the lid. In the days that followed, Senku began the final steps to build his cell phone. All the villagers joined forces and worked for days straight. Someday Jinro tried to run away, but Kinro forced him to help them with building the body parts for the cell phone. As a result, they managed to produce many new inventions to expand the kingdom of science. After a few weeks, together they managed to build the body parts needed for a cell phone. Senku said that they can create the most powerful weapon in the modern world, and the final day has come to build a cell phone. So after months of work, Senku and his friends received a cell phone in the Stone Age world. We then see the petrified statues, and Senku was aware that he had progressed very well since his revival. He looked at his latest invention with his friends, and they celebrated the successful project that will bring them victory. Then Kohaku imagined sending her voice from a long distance to another place. Unfortunately, Senku said that they would need a second cell phone, and everyone was disappointed. He then set up a long cable and said that it would also work, combined with a speaker. Meanwhile, Jinro realized that he could use this to confess his love to Ruri. Everyone wanted to hear his confession of love, and Chrome planned to confess his love to her. So Suika activated the cell phone, but Chrome didn't have the courage to confess his love to her. He said that science is great, and everyone was shocked that he didn't take advantage of his opportunity. Meanwhile, Ruri said that it works like a speaker, and Senku realized that a speaker doesn't exist in the stone world. He learned that the children also know about the word speaker. Then Ruri said that one of the 100 tales tells about a bee. The story is about a bee that injures its needle and becomes very loud because of the pain. At that moment, Senku remembered his father's grave, and he understood the reason for the story about the bees. Senku ran with his friends to his father's grave, and he believed that there was a treasure in the gravestone. Then he had to laugh and he said that the gravestone was a time capsule that came from his father. Magma planned to destroy the gravestone. Senku stopped him, and Kohaku used her skills to get to the time capsule. After that, he went to his laboratory and he realized that he received a record from his father. Jen was shocked to see a record, and he was excited to see what happened next. Senku replied that his father and his crew had left them a message. Then Senku told them that they could use it to capture voices, but they didn't understand a single word. Senku explained to them that they would add the voice into the record using sound and a needle. They were impressed by Senku's father, but he knew that his father wasn't smart enough to build it. Then we see Byakuya, and he found a glass bottle on the beach. He had the idea of making a record out of it and asked his friends to help him. Suddenly Jamil walked away, and he said that they don't have enough parts to make a record. Byakuya thought he didn't want to help him, but he learned that he went to look for the missing components in the Soyuz. Then Senku had the same idea as his father a thousand years ago, and planned to build a record player with his friends. Rui brought him a needle, but they still needed a hard rock to build a record player. Following this, we see that Dahlia wanted to use her diamond wedding ring to build the record player. She said that she would be happier using it as a component for the record player. After that we see Senku build a record player too, and all the villagers were called to his laboratory. They learned that they will hear the voices of the founders of Ishigami village. Then Senku began to prepare everything necessary, and he placed the needle on the record. Suddenly the villagers heard Byakuya's voice, and they were happy to share this special moment together. Everyone was fascinated to hear Senku's father's voice, and they learned that he was just like Senku. Byakuya had a special message for Senku, and Senku learned that his father believed he would be revived. However, he knew that Senku is not a dramatic person, and he started talking about his gift. Then he handed the microphone to Lily, so they all listened together to Lily's beautiful voice. The reason for this was that Byakuya wanted to bring joy to his son through music, so that he would never give up. As a result, all the villagers learned the miracle that came through music, and they couldn't believe that she sang as beautifully as Rihanna. At that moment, Senku remembered the day after he was revived. He experienced numerous adventures and was able to achieve many achievements in science. He smiled and was grateful for the nice message his father gave him. 
Suddenly all the villagers started crying and they admired the beautiful song that Lily had sung. They realized the power of science, and they looked forward to experiencing more miracles with the power of science with Senku. Then they decided to defeat the Tsukasa Empire, and Jen was impressed by Byakuya that after his death, he managed to motivate all the villagers to bring back civilization. Senku looked forward, and Kohaku said that he kept his promise. She remembered when Senku said that he will build the whole village into a nation of science. Following this, she said that she is willing to spend her life with him, and they will defeat the Tsukasa Empire to bring back civilization. Meanwhile, Taiju and Yuzuriha were aware that one year has passed. Tsukasa was sure that he would win the final battle against Senku, and he looked forward to the future. Afterwards we see Senku and he planned to use the power of science and his elite warriors to win against Tsukasa.